It's Sunday night, and as usual, I had no clue what time it was. It's 8.34. This is At Week's In. Hope you're strapped in. There's a lot to talk about tonight. How you doing, Paul? I'm doing well. How are you? I had no clue it was 8.34. We were sitting there talking like, oh, my God. Your computer lie. usually tells you right in front of down in the bottom. It does. I, I need to be better at looking at it, I guess. <laughs> you know, it's already your job to remind me when we have a giveaway so I don't end the stream before we do it. So, so I'm free and clear this week because we got nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I think on non-giveaway nights, if you could just like, give me a simple nudge like, hey, okay. it's 8.32. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate everyone being here. There's a plenty of other places to be, but you chose to be here. So while you're here, I'd like to tell you about Big Time Collectibles. Be sure to check them out at their website and on social media. Hey, it's C2E2 season. They're slowly rolling out like all their covers they'll have for it. That's one of the bigger cons. So they do, they go ham. They've already, I think, shown like four or five different ones, including some cool turtle stuff. Rom V's new book has a John Jang exclusive. Uh, Dawn, runner number one. Dawn runner number one. It's wild. Like a giant mech on the cover and a giant monster face to face. And it looks like the mech is holding like an entity or a person in his hand. Like I'm wondering if that's piloting the mech. I'm very interested for that series. And you may still be able, the ones that they've released anyway, you may still be able to go and get some because they're selling them. They were live today, I believe. Um, uh, you could go, it was like four o'clock. I think that you could go and buy some of them uh, before they go to C2E2, but only a Yo, limited I, number. I had no clue that today was the day they were going to do that big time. And a couple other shops are really good about offering those exclusives up for those who can't make it a limited number. I'm going to have to attempt to purchase one of those while we're here. And one thing I won't have to do, if any of those books come in, I will not have to send them to Justin because they'll come in pristine. But if you have books that you want to get in pristine condition, hit up Justin's comics on Instagram. He can get them clean and pressed for you and submit it to any submission service place that you were wanting to submit them to. So, uh, yeah. yeah. BTC has a Wicked Moon Knight number one foil that they're doing. Yeah, yeah, they do, don't they? Mm -hmm. You know what else and is the, Wicked? The John Jang and I think a, Gwen, a Spider Gwen, I think they're doing too, I think. Let's see what else is Wicked is our uh, guest tonight. You know, we just had a, uh, we had Cinecon 2024 just happen, which it's like the Comics Pro for the uh, theater companies. They do tons of movie announcements, showcase stuff and all that. So there's a lot of a lot of cool stuff to talk with that. But also like probably like I guess like the second most talked about TV show of the year just dropped. I mean, X-Men 97 is getting all the social media buzz and it's really outshadowing everything else. So this thing still hit the ground running, had a huge splash with Fallout dropping on Amazon. And they didn't just drop one episode. They dropped the entire season. And here to talk about it is our local favorite gamer, none other than Collecting with Durs. My name is Adam. I am Adam. My name is Adam. I am Adam. Hang on. <laughs> oh, man. I was going feral there for a moment. Having bro. a ghoul moment, huh? Yeah, dude. <laughs> I Woo! caught that immediately. I'm like, yes, I'm a gamer now. I'm, I'm a gamer now. I caught that. I was waiting for that. The, the only thing that would have been better is if you could hold a chicken. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right, bro. Licking lips at all. So we're definitely going to dive into some Fallout Season 1 talk here. I'm going to say hey to some of the people in the chat because I'm slowly trying to uh, pull up these C2E2 exclusives. Do you have to buy <laughs> them all at the same time, Paul? Shut up. Uh, some of them, it looks like they're doing um, – they're selling 50 sets of all of them, but some of them, it looks like you can buy separate. Where the heck is that at? You think they'll just have them at Aeros Con that you can just buy? No, they're going to be C2E2. Well, I mean, oh, if they have exclusive? any left, they might. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. yeah. BTC, isn't going to be, BTC isn't going to be at Heroes Con. Let's oh, see. they were last year. No, Snagged BTC was not. David, David Nakayama. Oh, oh okay. It, like, that's, that's why it felt like their booth, because it, it was all set up like them. And so. There we go. I, I, I think I lied. It. Did you find it? I did. When you If you click on the set, like yeah. it goes into the options where you can buy the set or the individuals. There we go. There we go. Dawn Runner number one, John Jang C2E2. Yeah, that thing's Mr. fire. Virgin. Only 25 I don't even know bucks. what it is. Yeah. Only 25 bucks. That's not bad right there at all. It gives Check me some kaiju vibes. It will, I will say that. It does. It does. What, what is going on, Pops? Attic is in the building. Hey, big guy. ABX Thank Comics you. and Games. What's going on, Paul Ski? Hashtag We Are Legion. Good evening to you. DJ Links, he's in the building. That's hey. good to see. Trev the Shipping Guru. What's up, homie? Brother John. How's it going? 
What's up? What's up? Dr. Von Hoot. Comics from the Spiral Dimension. Your resident Mal is in attendance. Good to see you. What's going on, Headquake? Morning, golf fans. Good morning to you. That was a that was a tremendous day. So it's it's all, yeah, Scotty Scotty Scheffler won for the second time. Ooh, dude, he didn't just win. Like he, mm-hmm. he won. Like uh shout out to well, him. Dude, the walk up to 18, like I'm I'm not a golf fan, but I told you I watch the Masters. You know, it's a local thing, it's exciting and all that. And uh you can easily appreciate it for what it is. Kind of like the people that just watch the Super Bowl. It's not hard to appreciate the game. Right. But uh dude, when Scotty was walking up to 18 and like everyone it looked like something out of a movie, like mm-hmm. as he's approaching and like and he gets when he gets parallel to people, they're they're on their feet clapping. Like, dude's mm-hmm. finishing his game out. He's walking up, finishing knowing like he just he just won and like it just didn't stop. It looked like something out of the movie, legit. Like yeah, he nice. was watching. Like that's that's wild. There have been some massive things where like uh, I think the last time Tiger won, I think like the crowd behind was oh. like behind him, like on the on the course behind him, and they're having to hold people back. Yeah, yeah so. <laughs> comeback story. Wow. That's the the biggest comeback story in golf history is when he yeah. came like years later. That was like what twenty nineteen yeah. something like yeah. that. He, who won it again? Came back and won it again. I mean, he's there every year, but I mean, like he, he had the car wreck. He'd have like the the the, the big mess, or no, he, he, he set the, the record for making the cut for the twenty fourth twenty fourth year in a row. He he made the cut, mm-hmm. broke the record. Yeah, he's broken a lot of records on that. He probably course. broke his own record to be honest with you, but <laughs> <laughs> not the record. Then he broke it. So he could right. Set a new one. Right. That's fantastic. What's going on, Scotty? Glad you're here tonight, Mike. What's up? What's up? I have comic issues. What's going on, homie? Glad you could make it. Joe, how's it going? Hello, 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 hello to you, to you, to you. I think we made it. I think we made it. So uh hey. Durs, give us give us the rundown, like real quick. Just like I'm not getting into all of it. Like Fallout's a video game. I don't I don't have any start about Fallout. We can start start with the game. I That's what I'm saying. Tell us what tell us what this when where how long has this game been around? What is it? Man, Why did it deserve I, a TV I, don't even, I don't even remember when the first game came out. Chat, Super uh, Nintendo. Chat, probably, no, dude, it was a computer game. I'm pretty sure the first one and two were on strictly computer. Back and then the Fallout. Yes. And then Fallout 3 on the original Xbox was my first adaptation of it. And that was good. And like I said, man, the Xbox for what it was back in the day, it was in its glory days, but it was not what it should have been. And then the masterpiece of Fallout 76, New Vegas, graced our entire landscape of uh, the 360 and the PlayStation 4 days. And it was, to this day, uh, I, I, I wish it would get a remastered version. I know Fallout 4 on the 25th is getting an updated next-gen version. But Fallout 76, to this day, is hands down one of my most beloved games and i know a lot of other gamers that's one of their most beloved games as well google says 1997 was when it first came out yes so old so i was seven years old and like i said i remember playing it on the computer a little bit dabbling it and then my like i said my first real inter- interpretation of it was on the original xbox but it's it's I'm a big Bethesda fanboy though too. I love the open world games. I love single player games. I like just being able to walk around, do whatever you want to do, and I am a looter. I like to loot and pick up everything I want. And uh, just man, just Fallout just created that nuclear wasteland better than any game I think has ever grafted. I would say. <clears throat> Purchasing those books, Mark. I can keep he's going. Buying, if you need he's to buy buying, more. His, he's buying his book. Nelson, I'm talking to Nelson real quick. Keep going. Though. Y'all, uh, so, so a good good thing to know is the show takes place just, I think it's, I'm not sure exactly. I think it's like 10 to 20 years after Fallout 4. And then Fallout 4 is basically just, just like 15, 20, 30 years after Fallout New Vegas. So the whole timeline of Fallout New Vegas to Fallout show to uh, Fallout 4 or Fallout or to Fallout show is like our lifetime, like a hundred years. So it's really easy to follow. I, I love the, uh, I mean, in the show, I love the, uh, the, the whole like uh, universe world. It's like, it's, it's like it's set in the fifties, but in the future, you know, it has very much a fifties feel to it with the TV and the shows that are there and the music and everything. But you can tell when you first see the city behind you, 
that it's you know that behind the 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 party that they have that it's very mm-hmm. much futuristic and everything um, right that's that's always something that people don't understand and the the perfect way i'm glad you mentioned that dude i've i'll bet all over the place ask trev in my stream man my stream i was just all over the place in my head but uh uh the the vibe fallout gets is think if the 1950s mm-hmm. happened like 200 years in our exactly. future Yep, that's that's the vibe that I love because uh, like running around the wastelands, listening to like Johnny Cash and all the old mm-hmm. music and just yep. vibing out with it, and then just all the food, the cultures, the way they talk. That is it, another thing that Fallout separates itself from any other game, really. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, obviously until the the bombs go off, and then suddenly it's like, okay, you know what? Now it's this dystopian world. But um, you know, the whole setup in that first first episode was, uh, you know, like I said, it was it had exactly what you said. What I was saying is, it's got like a fifties in the future type thing. Yep. Shout out to uh, Oppenheimer, but man, uh, those nuke blasts in that first episode were some of the best I've seen in a while. Oh, shit. They were nice. They were nice. Look at that! Look at that pit boy there. Did you get that hey. deluxe edition? Is that the deluxe edition okay, I see? You. Yes, sir. I know. I want to see it. <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> all. Awesome. What is going on? Man. Nice, nice, nice. Love to see I'm that, man. Sorry, Thank you so much for having me. Of course. For sure. I want to stay close to your microphone. You're kind of cutting out a little bit. There we go. That should be better. You saw the song "Bird of Our Generation" now. Does that does that thing open? Yeah, I, I have so. the actual Pip Boy. I have to. I thought it was inside this case, but I think it's down. That was four, right? Was that four? Yep, that's the special one. Nice. Four, and I got mm-hmm. horrible stories. Nice. They actually sent it to me without the game. I bought the nicest version. They sent it to me without the game. Oh, wow. and then I really. Someone uh, removed the game on the way. All I got was like the steel case and I complained and I had a real cute complaint. I was all like, Oh, I guess Raiders, you know, got my thing. I was really, cool. <laughs> dude, you'd hate then, how new games are. You can, the new games, all deluxe games ship to you with like the statue an empty steel case. And then the code for the game, they don't come with uh, the actual disc anymore. Well, that's what happened to me was I had no game. And then when I complained. Yeah, they don't come like that. It... They sent me another steel case without a game. I was furious. Yeah, wow. that's what they do with that's what they do with deluxe versions. Uh, I found that out a couple of years ago that they stopped doing it. They just stopped shipping the game and they just give you a code. And it's like, okay, cool. Well, well, like why even ship the steel case? That's That's my thing. What finally got Bethesda to listen was I was like in my complaints, sending emails along the lines of, I would like you to take a look at my gamer score. You can see that I have beaten <laughs> Fallout and Fallout 3 to completion, but yet Fallout 4 hasn't been played on this account. Why wouldn't I have played this? You guys, <laughs> like, what's my right. hustle? Send right. me the game. <laughs> it eventually worked out. Nice. Yeah, I was trying to. What is your tip? To put it on screen, but I don't want to take up too much more time talking about this stuff. The show was great. Yes, agreed. Yeah, Phenomenal. It, it had uh, it had one of the most uh, engaging openings I've seen in a show in a long time. It, like agreed. Uh, it had like this futuristic 1950s world. It was almost like if you go back in time and pit, like to the like uh, the World's Fair and the, how they how mm-hmm. they pictured the future back in the 1950s. It's like a lot of it came to pass in this world. It was cool, just the little birthday setting and like the, all the, all the tension with the little hints at like the news playing and stuff and the radio and not wanting the right. kids. Why, just, why am I gonna Why am I gonna do the weather if we're not gonna be here next week? <laughs> so, so and, and I I got you guys on the Easter eggs because these are my pause moments like that when the when they said the president's gone in the games like there dude you could spend hours reading notes and filing the lore for fallout it's insane and we can get into that in a little bit but like when the president was gone in the games they actually touch on that a lot that the president knew what was going on vault tech kind of hinted at him what was going on and uh he had the thing so it was a nice little o day and then the ads on the tv i loved you had Gro- grognak the barbarian and then i think yeah. you had one for nuka cola and then there was another one for something else but just seeing those on the game because you pick those up in the fallout and they're comic books like you find them grognak the barbarian he's a comic book 
And as you pick him up, it increases your skill point of melee. So like anytime you're using like axes or bats or pipes or anything, it increases those skills and they're little comics you can read in the game too. Now are any yeah, of the characters that, what is it? Oh yeah, just you getting um power ups from reading comic books is one of uh mm -hmm. one of the great mechanics from the world of <laughs> I right. can uh, I can associate with that. Mm -hmm. Facts. I get power ups from reading comics regularly. What were we gonna say about with characters? Were any of the characters that are featured in the show Lucy Walton Goggins ghoul character, uh, Lucy's dad, or any of these characters Maximus. made out of the game? Yeah, Maximus. I think with the timeline, no, but with the ending of the first season. There's something that there's if it follows the same universe, which I think it, it, it could be its own universe, but we'll see. I don't want to spoil what the, the next thing is, but there's definitely not a human that runs New Vegas because we, we've all beat New Vegas. We know there's oh, yeah, I beat the hell out of that one. It's somebody with a face. He might his, his name might be Mr. Face, you know, but but he can live forever. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's the interesting thing about this is I was mm -hmm. wondering while that was coming out if it was going to be, you know, kind of what uh, Marvel does with its stories, and a, like an amalgamation of a bunch of different things that you know from this world and just kind of doing their mm -hmm. own thing with it. Something I think people have accused the halo of to fault. But like, I can, I can attest, be... I can, I want to back that up because Halo is my niche. That's for people that got two or three episodes into season one and never watched season two, where they do such a fan service that it comes from direct quotes from the game, direct lines from the game, direct moments from the game. Season two is nothing but a fan service. So yeah, I think, they, I think they figured out what they did wrong with season one and mm -hmm. ridiculous. They were trying to set it, it up. Season See, two. They they said they were gonna use the Halo lore and universe and do their own thing, and that's that's scary for a Halo fan, and that's scary to – that's a lot to do. Fallout, I think, just took the safe path, and they're like – because I, I don't think they've – because Halo straight said it's not in the gaming universe. Yeah, I don't well, with Fallout, Fallout with, the video, with the Fallout video games, is each game its own character's own time era, own everything? Or do you have, like, a reoccurring protagonist you play as it's, in each game? So you create your own character, but there are, as you go through, like if you're playing Fallout 4, you do see characters from other games or find like notes or remnants or other things from other characters from other games. So, so basically they are this, this, this show can just plug itself anywhere it wants to in the timeline. Think of the games Lucy it, as your creative character. And it can, That's what I you took plug Lucy it in as. Anywhere in the timeline between these games and it's pretty mm -hmm. much can still be canon as long as you don't break right. new hard lore pretty much mm -hmm. that's, that's i thought cool. lucy was because you start in a vault in most fallout games and and most of them you start like even even in fallout 4 you start as like a baby and you go through all that it's been a while since i played that and uh i think fallout 76 is the only one even that one you start in a vault. well how far did but, you get into the show i actually only got through the first episode and i'm like cool. I, when they when they dragged off the original Apollo treaties to the to the um mm. <laughs> to the main world, you know, to the outside of the vault, you know. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, I'm looking forward, but you know, don't worry about it spoiling everything. You know, I, I know what I get into when I come here on Sunday night, so don't worry about that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I I'm really, there. I really enjoyed it. I just haven't had time to to watch the rest of them yet. So. Right. There's some, there's some, there's some cool little plot points, whatever. That I don't, I didn't feel like this show like really. Uh, I don't know. I would probably give this show about an eight, like a low on the green scale it's still green it excels in having doing good at a lot of things and not necessarily being great at any one thing you know like like visually it looks good like the post-apocalyptic just the design mm -hmm. looks good it's it's cg to the max you know with minimal set stuff i'm curious where they filmed it that's it what i'm really curious in the future where do you think but then well, like yeah, but the <laughs> sets bro they they have really nice sets on the on the show I think the sets are min are minimal. I think it's a lot of green screen. Yeah, I think it's a lot of blended as well. But I don't know. Some sets it seemed like they were like because because it did say that uh, they're not greenlit for a second season, but they are moving to California to collect the whatever tax to 
use that to fund something else. And then, uh, like the the casting, I think was perfectly fine. I, I like the actress yeah. that played Lucy. Fine. The actor that played Maximus was fine. Uh, original what Paula Trading was fine, boy. but Walter hey, uh, Goggins <laughs> absolutely steals the show in every scene he's boy. in. He's just cooler than cool. Mm. Then he's like the Red Skull. If the Red Skull was awesome, right? Yeah. Uh, so they filmed it. They filmed it in Utah and in Namibia. Okay. okay. And um, and, and the guy who did it, the guy who's uh, the executive producer, um, is um, Christopher Nolan's brother. Jonathan Nolan, and he also himself. and and uh, he also did uh, Westworld. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice! You can tell this doesn't have Westworld money, but yeah. few th- few shows have HBO money. HBO, right. it's not just TV. What I will touch on <laughs> about uh, Goggins' character, the ghoul, is always in Fallout. There's always this one character who's kind of who everybody attaches to. Uh, I think in Fallout Four, it was a certain super mutant. And then uh, there was another character who was like a detective who was like a cyborg. So I think it played really well that he was kind of an offset character as well as a main character. And it just felt so perfect for what the Fallout uh, vibe of the universe was. You finished it, Dirk? What? I binged the whole thing. Yes, sir. I just, just finished, finished it, it just today. Right he's, before. He's on cloud <sighs> nine right now. I'm on cloud ten. Like it's ten out of ten better than Halo for me, man. It's it's and I said it on my stream. I'll say it right now. This might be the most perfect, detailed, uh, to the point adaptation of anything from like comics to movie, animation to movie, books to movie the most detailed and fan service and perfect mark gave it an eight out of 10 and never seen the sh- or played the game oh, so you Maybe haven't seen first. sin city right oh <laughs> dude sin city's incredible sin city's incredible but i'm saying i'm, I'm saying, saying that's the most know. that's the most accurate adaptation so, so, okay. or, 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 or watchman like think of it, think of it. okay so so yeah. also those movies don't have a thousand different little objects laying yeah, on the ground at all times true. That's, That's what true. I mean by minuscule details that I'm pausing, like, jumping out of my seat. Mm. Yes, Taylor, my girlfriend, oh, yeah. she doesn't she doesn't like watching me play these kind of games. But we, she we call her Lady Dirt. Yeah, yes, which I'm respecting. Yes, yes, yes. But whatever, <laughs> she's on the edge of her seat. Was binging it with me, loved it. But like I said, I think this was one of the best adaptation, and it has now set the bar for gaming. And what 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 an adaptation should be going forward. Page well, to screen, Green Mile was almost one hundred percent, and I haven't read Green Mile, but that's oh, uh, it was so good. Damn good, it was movie. good. I've seen the movie countless times. I, uh, I get yeah. to go to Shawshank Redemption when I can go there whenever I want. I live forty minutes away. That's a weird statement to make out loud. <laughs> it's a it's a haunted it's a haunted house, bro. It's one mm-hmm. of the biggest haunted houses in Ohio. I didn't really? know that. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Mile. Yeah, the main yeah, twenty-three four. month member milestone from circumstances. What's going on, brother? Yeah, so uh, there's that was one thing that I kind of I even felt when I was watching the show. There's plenty of moments when you feel like this is definitely uh, fan service to the game, like down to the uh, the the guys, the snake oil sells sells them with the elixirs who. Whips up the concoction and heals Buddy's foot inadvertently. Dude, 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 there's definitely one moment where you take some stuff, you wake up naked, all your stuff's gone, your entire inventory's gone, you're naked, and you're like in a death claw nest in the game. <laughs> and the death claws yeah. are like one of the most dangerous enemies in the game, and you have nothing. You have to like sneak out. You can make some okay. questionable medical augmentations in that game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. And I mean, it was, I mean, as, as TV series go, it was pretty gory too. I mean, the whole thing with, um, the, the guy that Lucy married, right. Um, and you know, when she, when she, when, exactly. And then when the, when the guy put his, his leg in the boot, mm-hmm. right. And that's, that's how the game <laughs> yeah. is. And yeah. when, they, when the show well, goes into slow motion, this, do, well, you got to play think through, of like, wasted a perk on bloody mess. You, I use it every time. Because <laughs> uh, so you can so ask for the, more gore when you play the game. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it seems like uh, they've done that. They, there's a lot of nods to that. They literally run through like your main character's special uh, mm-hmm. stats when we first. That's how you stuff. create your character in the game. Is the special when they're sitting in the vault, like filling out the taking the test. That's how you create your character in the game. 
when it's slow motion, because in the game it's called a VAT system, you can like pick different perk, like points on a body, it slows your character down. So like in that one scene with the ghoul, that's what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Now, with with that ghoul who re, uh, repaired his foot, now this is a spoiler since you've already seen episode one, Paul, but like uh, you do, you see a snake oil salesman in the very beginning who mm-hmm. is yelling at people like, Throughout the whole very, show. Well, it's great because it starts out with him saying, you know, like, I got something that will cure, uh, cure yeah. your ailment. And then they mm-hmm. walk by with no foot. And he's like, I got something that will grow a foot back. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, the first That's time funny. you see him, Maximus saves him from getting mm-hmm. killed by the guy because he was banging his chickens. Dude, why was that guy so pale was my thing. I couldn't understand it. Probably he was so pale. Heard. Maybe. Maybe. There's one thing I love I, the payoff been... that he wasn't lying about an elixir. You're right. Though. Yeah. He, he right. <laughs> right. But dude, That's there's one thing I've been dying to talk about. That's what that was one thing I was talking about. As soon as I saw a dog in the show, I was like, man, he better be called dog meat or I'm gonna riot. Because that's like one yeah, of the main dogs. It. Yeah, they said <laughs> it. And I was like, and then like the war, the war never changes when they hit that. I was like, yes. They didn't give me a uh, bingo, bango, bongo, my favorite song in Fallout. <laughs> me and Lady Durs were kind of disappointed about it. But this is the one thing I've been wanting to talk about. So each vault in the Fallout lore is an experiment. And if you go into it, like, uh, so like one of the vaults in the, in the game was uh, 20 men, 10 women, one Black Panther. That was a vault. Another one <laughs> of the vault was everybody went in except they didn't know the world ended and they were all hooked up to VR the entire time with like uh, feeding tubes. And then one day the overseer messed with their VR, tripped them out, killed them all. And then he killed himself. Uh, One was just all babies, like little tiny, like two or three year olds in a vault. Cause that's what each vault was. One was uh, all just creepy experiments. mm -hmm. One had nothing but hallucinogenic drugs constantly being One they intentionally overpack so that people would get violent. Yeah. And then Mm -hmm. they have the three vault system as well. Dude, that it's it's the fallout lore is deep. What's the the deal with the Brotherhood of Steel? I feel like there's a bunch of backstory on them from when we meet them because they talk about how they used to rule the the badlands and they kind of when we meet them in the show they're in almost like a, a wasted away version of themselves they clearly have have existed for a long time they talk about how they've kind of fallen from glory there's they even got a, a chick on in the brotherhood with them and it was like when they the had a huge characters. they had a massive war with the end enclave that's what the, the who, is that something about. that we didn't get introduced no to? They talk, so so the scientist that gets his head cut off he was escaped from the enclave. Got you. Got you. So okay. think of the enclave as the Sith. Brotherhood of Steel back in the day, Jedi. Good good guy, bad guy. That's what that's what you so would, these are you just survivors out. of the bomb that kind of went their own path and like kind of like these people there's like all became these, warriors these and these scientists. Factions. Okay, got you, got you. Because right. we have this the show when I mentioned this early for this being like attached to the guy writer of Westworld and I think at the day it released someone said uh, in classic Westworld fashion they're going into too many plot points my thing is like there wasn't a lot of plot points in this it was pretty linear and like you you touch on like things that you can clearly unpack and dive into along the way mm-hmm. they they stay the course pretty tight which they did. isn't they a bad did. thing but it just leaves me wanting to know so much more and which I think they thing. did. I think they did that intentionally because like I said, they're they're right now Fallout 76 is like two dollars on all platforms. Uh Fallout 4 is like five dollars on all platforms. It's getting the next gen update. They want people to watch the show, go back, experience the games, get more into it, and then be ready for season two. That's what There's I think. Plenty of is. solid lore videos if you just want to find mm, out more. That too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And but, like what's really like yeah, because you can play that game for hours, and I Whoa. recommend it. I love the Fallout games, but um, the lore has always not been completely concrete. Because you had the original Fallout, which happened mm-hmm. in California, and then you have like in Fallout Three, there's just been hours and Walls hours of, video made of people pointing out problems uh, as far as the continuity between these two mm-hmm. worlds. But no one really cares. Everyone loves playing in this world. And there's a couple things that we all agree are basically mm-hmm. canon. 
and we're going to find out because this is taking place furthest in the canon and it seems mm -hmm. to be in the same world as these games so when he visits fallout 76 we will actually be i'm sorry not Fallout 76. when he visits uh las vegas or new vegas mm -hmm. rather well, we're no. going to be given like concrete answers to what yeah. is the actual ending to uh my like, man yeah, that's we'll know because 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 like I said, they're they're I'm I'm assuming there's still gonna be remnants or something there because that was like so when if you oh, there's, watch, clear, if, there's clearly stuff there. He went there for a reason, dude, and the ghoul and, let him go for a reason because he's that that was one right. of the like uh that was one of the great moments in the show for me when when he uh for one the the siege at the end when the brotherhood of steel come in and are just massacring massacring i'm like yo how does anyone make it out of here alive mm -hmm. and uh then just in a classic like clint eastwood fashion just leaning up against the wall well hey and everyone turns around his draws on him he doesn't give a shit the ghoul just doesn't care he's he knows his skill level he mm -hmm. knows who he's dealing with his experience mm -hmm. like surpasses everyone and he knows he's hard to kill and uh, just just how cool he was. And then in that moment at the end when he talks to the original Paul Atreides and he just walks out and draws down on him. But he doesn't just kill him. He's like, I've been waiting 200 years to ask you this. Where's my effing family? I'm like, oh, snap. And he lets him leave. Like, there's there's mm -hmm. no way if he didn't want him to leave, he would have left. There wasn't no, wasn't no, what was going to stop him? Like, Shout out to the show for answering a lot of questions that they never answered in the games for years. Like we've never really a hundred percent understood how the ghoul the whole process really worked. They've talked about it. We kind of knew, but yeah, never to that extent. Evolution uh, stuff. Yes. Right. Never, 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 ever knew vault tech was just keeping themselves like vault. People were just keeping themselves alive like that. That was new. We've had hints about things because of the robo brain. As soon as I seen that in the game, or the show, I jumped out. I was like, what was, the, what was the name? What was the name of it? Tom's Tom's or something like the guy's name? No, was... Buds Buds. Buds Buds. Buds Buds. Buds. Brain, they're, they're robo brains in the game. They're basically keeping you alive forever. Yeah, for like game lore, showing the collusion of all of the mm -hmm. different companies was one yeah. of the most interesting things. Is that mm -hmm. that immediately explains like a whole bunch of things people have held up yes. for a very long time. Why yes. is there so many Rob Co robots in some of these vaults? Some vaults why is everything sponsored crazy. by Nuka Cola? Yeah. There's like <laughs> how do they you know get sugar bombs on board for all of this? Well turns out right. there was <laughs> a big collusion mm -hmm. of all of them. Yeah, yeah that was a that was a bombshell moment and yo how 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 scary spot on was it is as soon as someone introduced the idea of like, why don't we just all compete in this game? And then right. they, there was no hesitation. They all just like, mm -hmm. I can do this and I can do that. And I can do this. And I can, I'm like, geez. Right. I have a new cookbook. I, I, I will, I will say if you thought this season was anything, what happens in new Vegas makes this season look like a PG kids show. I guarantee it. Because New Vegas... Some, all New stuff Ve I, would, I would like to see more of. Fallout like, uh, New Vegas, it, dude, it is just the most adultery factions. Uh, They're, one of the factions is Roman. It's just all the different stories that are going to... Dude, I'm telling you, it is going to be off the chain. The 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 uh, I forget what they're called. They, they're on wheels and they have a face. They're robots. Uh, they're hilarious. Handicap all people? over. No, it, it, he's got one wheel and he's a robot. Yeah, but like all the they're robots. Yeah. The way they the way they oh, make that's them. Rosie, like, Rosie. Kind of. Amazing. It's kind of like Rosie, but Voltex's way of making them more humane the, for people was jets. putting a TV screen right. with a smiley face on it. Yeah, I hope they don't like go that classic Amazon course of like let's just make it more debauchery, just. Well, like they, dude, they, no, lose, no, they, lose, they, lose, they lose me with that stuff real fast. We need as it. Fans, you also need to remember, like, this isn't a video game. This is a different medium. So you can honor we the want lore, it to be a you still, video you game. still have to have a story. It still has to be character driven because you're not holding I, a controller moving through this world, creating your own experience. We're all watching it being given the same shared experience. So, like, with the boys, you know, that's where it loses me because 
they stopped caring so much about a story and they've leaned into just shock value. Now, season one of Fallout, it had, it had, a, that's what I mean. Like it didn't excel at any one thing. It did a lot. It did a lot of, it did a lot of things well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it, it had that linear story. The characters, you get to see Lucy, like you get to see a huge character arc with Lucy. Right. Now, the ghoul is straight as an arrow. Like that's a man on a mission. Mm -hmm. But the way that they use Walton Goggins' character to like tie us and tether us to the past, like you you see a character arc, but you're missing the entire the entire 198 years of it, you know? So that's that's really cool to kind of I saw it in the chat. Of, there we go. Uh, the, the touch on that. I think Fallout is the perfect show to set the bar and not care to try and be a TV show to be a TV show to be a TV show that feels like you're playing a video game. Because if you're going to make an adaptation of a Didn't game, you already do that. No, 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 but see, but see, well, that, that, was, that was phenomenal. You mean that, well. that was phenomenal. Carl Urban and the Rock, just that, first person and, shooter. And, but side note, we're going to throw that out of the way. Halo, even season one had a better first person scene than that. And season two had a better first person than that. Well, but there's also the like 28 game, difference. Right. But being the type of game Fallout is and being a game that can be funny, over the top. But at the end of it, it, all, it was always and has always been a Bethesda game. And you can fault Bethesda for what it is. But there's one thing Bethesda has always been. That's the game company for anybody that doesn't know that made Fallout and Skyrim and all these incredible games. They will always know how to tell a story. Yeah, it doesn't matter how they tell it. But, but this isn't Bethesda. This is Amazon. Right, no, right. But what I was saying is I think this show is not trying to just be, you know, what like like Halo was trying to be more of a show. This show is just trying to have fun, feel like you're playing a video game, but you're watching a show. And as a gamer, I felt like I was wandering wandering the wastelands, man, running. As, as not a gamer, I felt like I was watching a gamer show, but still able to enjoy it as a show. I think that's what I mean. And that's like, phenomenal. Yeah, I think I think it was well balanced. That's what I'm saying. I hope that they don't lose that balance. Because like how you said, like New Vegas is like is all this it's, it's just there just don't be don't be shocked if there's a more sh there's more shocking moments because Dude, I'm not, New Vegas I'm not is wild shocked by Amazon's <laughs> yeah. shocking moments that's what that's that's the bad part is shocking TV isn't shocking to me you know I'm 36 years old Underrated. I've been a movie Underrated. head my whole life I've I've I was a store manager of a movie stop for years like right. watching shows movies is, is like one of my favorite pastimes so you're not going to shock me with shocking all you're doing is wasting you're wasting your show. If you if, like, there's a, there's a balance to it where it, it works well. And then there's, it's just, sometimes it's Agreed. just like lazy writing. You like, there's like the shot when you're just doing a show for shock value, that's no different than when me and Paula were like doing a DC deep dive and saying this comic was lazy. It just leaned in to basic tropes. You see when you can't think of a good idea for a story, right. that's what I'm saying. Like, I hope they don't lose that, just, but they have great, just, they have great show runners. So hopefully, right. Just think of Las Vegas, what Las Vegas is now, but what it would be now if it survived the end of the world. Uh, That's yeah, what I mean by a bit of that and even Geiger, you know what I mean? It gets crazy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I think it's a good, okay. That's a good point. That's a good reference. So think of like the debauchery and the adulterism in Geiger. That's what I'm trying to kind of reference yeah. now, like New Vegas, kind of that tone. And you yeah, that Las, Las Vegas is always the city that makes it, no matter what happens. No matter yes. what. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> relaxing. What is a death claw, and why is it coming? The skull I got crushed, yeah, bro. The death claws are probably the scariest, you know, mm -hmm. like animal besides the scorch. The yaguai. Okay, so that oh, was the, 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 that's the skeleton we saw at the end, right? The, yes. Yes. Yeah, the skull I got I was crushed. To see so a death claw. So we uh, saw the skeleton of it at the end, but also I think we were supposed to assume that's what killed the original Vault 44 scientist that busted in the room that you didn't see, but it knocked the entire... Oh, no, vault that was a creepy finger so, fish thing. So I, I froze frame and slowed that down, and it was that it was the finger fish from okay. the... Yes, because I thought the same thing. Because I stood up, I was like, death claw. Because I was... Dude, I was calling for... 
a hundred different things before the even show started. So I was ready for them. So when they happened, I was excited. There you, there you go, guys. Look, that's exactly what they were talking about earlier in the stream. Boom, man. boom, boom. boom. <laughs> Paul, 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 amazing. Just finished it. I never played the game, but I just ordered three, four, and New Vegas for 13 I told you. on Steam. So what we mentioned yeah. earlier, E-Man, is that uh, this show is, is made in a way where you definitely want more lore, and they have them all on, like, uh, clearance sale right now for like mm -hmm. for purchase for like there's, a couple bucks a piece. Yeah, there's so much lore to this world. It's been going on since you know the 80s, starting with right. Wasteland and all these different games. Oh, uh, dude, I forgot about all that stuff. Yeah, dude, that wasn't even really attached to it, but the lore still is in the same universe. Well, like a lot of the stuff is a callback to you know the really old game that was mm -hmm. happening. California stuff, the Shady Sands. Uh, oh, yes, yes, thing. yes. That was a big mm -hmm. part of the original game, where the whole idea is, you know, you get sent out into this world, you got to do something. You're normally looking for your dad. That's like every Fallout game. You kind of <laughs> choose your own adventure. That's my, fa that's my favorite, that she's looking for her dad. That was my favorite part. It's I either you're looking for... I was, was going to say, say, it's either you're looking for your dad it. or just finding new, new keys. That's it. <laughs> yeah is that like uh what is it the ghoul he's like the uh what is it called uh forrest gump of the fallout world <laughs> yeah <laughs> seen what? everything been a part of every uh -huh. story so that was like i somehow they pulled that off that should have like made everyone irritated i feel like how it was the character it was the actor he was but he's so fantastic to watch and it's so great mm -hmm. I, I love it immediately uh, they need to give Ron Perlman a job before this thing is over. He's been a part mm. of this game series, mm -hmm. and crap, mm -hmm. he's normally the one that gives the uh, "War Never Changes" line. Yeah, so dude, I was waiting for Perlman to show up. I was waiting for it. Has he voiced? Yeah. Has he voiced a character? Has he just been like a narrator for it? He's, he's the narrator guy that says the iconic "War Never Changes." And I think eventually he was like revealed as the president at the. Dude, if you look at Fallout voice actors, like that was like the peak of like all the A list actors coming up, and like there were so yeah. many people that were Don't in the blow game. Your mind. You know, like Fallout mm -hmm. 3, it was a big deal mm -hmm. because like mm -hmm. the dad character. Okay. And you're were, you were right in the very beginning uh, in Fallout 3, it starts out with you being literally born. You you watch yes. yourself, it's like light comes around. Mm -hmm. I wanted to touch on this. Talking to you, it's Liam Neeson. I thought I was crazy when I was watching this. So do y'all remember the, the ghoul character Roger when mm -hmm. when Walton Goggins and Lucy got like he was, you know, he's he was going feral. He was out like, yeah, Roger was sitting there going feral and it was his friend and everything. And he was talking to him about his wife and then he mm -hmm. put him out of his misery for him, like with like mm -hmm. real quick fast. And then you get to see how they have to like cannibalize each other to survive kind of thing. Mm hmm. Who the hell was playing Roger? Because I would bet my life on it that was Kevin Bacon in a small role. Now, wait, wait, now, wait, wait, Somebody wait, 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 just... yes. wait, wait, wait. Now, do you remember? I'm uploading a video. I can't wait. wait. Remember when Maximus and Lucy were trying to cross the bridge and the two other people were there and they had that exchange about, let's just put our hands up, let's do a piece of okay, yeah. mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. the, the girl died fast and then the guy died second. I would bet my life on it that was Stefan Dorf. Who's Steffendorf? I'm bad with names. Wojian. The bad guy from uh from Blade. Like like, like I kept the original, oh, okay. I kept seeing all these people in like makeup and stuff. I'm like, dude, is that is that so he's saying Neil Huff played Roger. I don't believe that. I'm I'm still gonna See, die. I, I'm with like him. that, but with <laughs> animation voices. I whenever well, I, I hear kept, an I kept animation voice. All these actors under the makeup and hearing these I'm like, dude, that's that's this person. Dude, they did have a lot of surprise actors that I wasn't really expecting to be in that show and to be in there. Oh man, what's his what, what was Knight Titus that act there when he did the map <laughs> came Dude, up? Dude, he is Yeah, that was Michael Rappaport. That was Michael Rappaport from New Englander. Englander. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> like what? <laughs> so good. Yeah, yeah, your phone. Just like that. yeah, he's just like that in real life. Oh no, no, his uh the other dude, uh the squire, I'm thinking, not Ian Rapport, but yeah, I uh, I caught that. Uh the uh Maximus the Squire. I don't know his name. 
but how goofy he is in that show. He's a comedian. He's just as goofy in real life. He was in um, uh, Superstore, and it was amazing. As, uh, one of the main characters. Yeah, he uh, was the uh, he was the um, the husband of um, of one of them. Yeah, he was he was very good in that. Yeah, uh, and then Fred Armisen and his all uh, fiddle music radio station torturing mm-hmm. the wasteland. Like, that was amazing. This so, week, like, like most weeks, it's fiddle week. <laughs> so like I'll I'll sit here and just hit the details right there. Like how they hit that that fiddle, the 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 radio station as you're walking around Fallout, you're finding new radio stations. You do that just in the game. So where, that was where... Mr. That was Mr. House at the round table at the end, the Robco company owner. Oh so yeah, that's that's the dude at the end of Fallout New Vegas. That's the guy. Yeah. That that's okay. him at the table. Okay, so that would so then, then I'm assuming it's definitely the same as in the video game world as well. So that would just clarify that, because he's like the main either bad guy or good guy in Fallout New Vegas, depending on the ending you get. Yeah, he's like a mix of Walt Disney right. and Howard Hughes. hundred <laughs> percent, dude, dude, to the T, Mark. When he says that, that magic, dude, he is. <laughs> Walt Disney is a great. Yeah, I heard, I yeah was... Fred, Fred Armistead was in there at the uh, radio tower. Mm-hmm. That was my friend of yours. Bang! Nope, and just closes the door. Again, yeah, another all, all just Stomach just finding those Fred. radio. Yeah, the, and that's giant, and that's what size, radio towers do in the game. All the human-sized bear traps, just with corpses in them and stuff. That was pretty funny. Yeah, I liked Everyone one of my. Credit. One of my favorite quotes from the entire show was uh, when they were walking away from the, the pond and uh, the ghoul says, uh, it's one of the Wasteland's golden rules. No matter no matter how hard you're trying to do something, you always find a hundred different things to sidetrack you, just like in an, in an open world game. And you're trying, Matt, to get to, Matt Barry, trying to get to your goal. Matt Berry from uh, What We Do in the Shadows was in there as well. So, so More interesting in New York City. So, so very interesting that they used him because he is spot on to Codsworth's voice in the game, but yeah, he's but not like the voice it, right? actor. He's not the voice actor for the game. That was scary. He would do so, like how he says, I'm the Codsworth. That's all the Codsworths in the game, that robot that tries to cut her open. That's like the butler bot that everybody has basically assigned to their homes in Fallout. And yeah, when you play Fallout, like me and Durs, we've listened to hours of the same mm-hmm. voice, which is like vaguely British. Yes, sir. Yes. And he was and, on it, spot on. Yeah, and like dragging that actor into this who is famous for delivering, yeah, this like just posh accent. It was yeah, it was just brilliant casting and like that's what a serendipitous thought to do that. It's so fun to mm-hmm. have. It just makes like Fallout better. The idea that right. that actor was right. the guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, amazing. I really, really Addition so many to- nods. Like where where the ghoul finds dog meat at the Red Rocket <laughs> at the Red Rocket uh, uh, like gas station. That's the gas station that you find dog meat like in the game. He's at that gas station. Well, that's cool because that's where the ghoul finds him again. Yes. Mm-hmm. That was such a like I was just thinking like the first time that the ghoul sees dog meat and what occurs with the fight. I'm like, yo, you know, like this whole show's ruined if you kill that dog and he and he kills the dog. <laughs> you would have took because I saw the dog in the trailer and I'm like, that dude, I was calling it. I was like, if he's not named Dog Me, I'm gonna be pissed. I was well, even messaging that, you. Like in terms of film and television show, oh, you, that can, too. you can you can literally mm-hmm. kill any character in the world that you want to kill, but it's a golden rule taught in film school that you can't kill a dog and come back from Facts. It. if Facts. you want to like I was like, I'm like, dude, this ghoul character is awesome. Then he killed the dog, and I immediately like immediately in my brain, like I'm like, I felt that. I felt the switch, Mike. Bad guy, bad guy. He's got to die this season. And then you see what he does after, Mike. Best guy, best guy in the world. <laughs> to the end of time. Can we? Go. <laughs> can we touch? Can we touch on? Oh man, I loved it. Can we touch on when the ghoul hits him with the stim pack? How fast 
the dog recovers and how perfect of a homage that is to video game. Cause like, and uh-huh. if you get hit with this, it doesn't matter what, what's well, going on. If you hold on, hold yourself, on, you're hold, good. Hold on. So Paul, how perfect of an homage is that to the video game, Paul? Oh, incredible. There you go, Durs. It's incredible. <laughs> I just wanted to get it, Paul. Or just any no. dog. How about yeah, that? That's why y'all are here. We 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 watch the show. This? Y'all play the how game. about this? For, this is easier for you guys. Any game you've ever played in your life, when you use a med pack, it okay, heals so that, you. That's just a generic medicine heals you game. Yes. I have never had to use a med pack on Mario. Uh, oh, <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a well, a mushroom man instantaneous growth. Yeah, just, just the nod of of him using a stim pack and just being able to heal you right back up. I love that. Yeah, I, I got that vibe. That was pretty cool. Now let's get uh let's get into uh her brother. Like so, none of none of these vault characters, none of these vault dynamics we see in this game with vault thirty. Really, thirty-one through thirty-three. None of none of this vault is showcased in the game. I know there's countless vaults that all have their own mm-hmm. shtick, but is mm-hmm. this vault shtick right. ever shown in a game? Right. So to touch on that, how her brother is being nosy and literally hacks hacks the computer the same way you do in the game. He's going through the overseer notes the same way you do in the game because that's how you find out about what's going on in these vaults. Because in the vaults, you you stumble across them, and not all of them are open. Some of them are inhabited. Some of them are not. And What uh, happened to the residents of Vault 32? Of 32? So, they Paul, you, all... noticed, you noticed in Episode 1 when the raiders raided, they were already noticing that the residents of that vault were already dead and decomposed. They had been dead for a while. The crops were already dead. Like, like that's a... Like there's three vaults that are next to each other, 31, 32, and 33, that are interconnected. They're all not interconnected. It's those three are beside each other. That's how they're doing the uh, bride swap. And when the raider thing happened, you know, her brother looked out over the dead corn. It had been dead for a long time. He also saw the other vaulties that are already way past decomposed. It isn't like the raiders just got there. That's a that vault like had a, a they all ended their, their themselves. They something each other. They took a fork and put it into a toaster. They they all self terminated, and that's part of the mystery. That her brother goes back over there to snoop around mm-hmm. on his own to see to see what was left of that vault after the raiders and realize that the raiders didn't do all this damage. They did it to themselves. And that's think, exactly what we would do as a gamer. We would go in to a Well, no, I'm asking. I, I'm throw the game, throw the game away. I'm not okay, talking about the okay. game right now. I'm talking about the the plot of this this season. Like, did we ever get any so answers we don't, to what they did? So we so basically we don't know what's going on. So basically, thirty one was supposed to have people there the whole time. That's what we were led to believe. Yeah, so but third it was one's just, just the cryo place for the yes, leaders. with the robo brain and that and and whatever was texting back was either the robo brain or an automated message or something. But thirty two was dead for years and years and years. And like I said, it could be anything. What he read in those overseer notes that we might not have seen. Because, like I said, each vault was a very specific experiment. They yeah, but there that that anything. though, but that's the thing with these vaults. 31, 32, 33 is one experiment. Well, we're not okay. sure. Well, well we, yeah, we, we do, yeah, we yeah, do yeah, know that because something. these these three we vaults. Don't know are what it is yet. Yeah, well, I'm just saying Whoa. these are these are one experiment because these three vaults are connected. And even at the end of the show, when they have the the Doctor Strange love meeting, they even tell you like we can even do the three connected. They they ingrained that at that point, like so, that's when. So I they think I the think they were connected, experiment. connected, but each one. I so I think for the vault dwellers themselves, they thought they were all connected, but I still think they were doing their own thing because yeah, the I one was the cryos. But I but at the end of the day, I don't think I think we're just led to believe what happened to that vault. I don't. But think you got to remember, there's a lot answer. of there's a lot of residents in 33 that came from 32. Like mm-hmm. the the eye patch girl, she she grew up in thirty two and moved over to thirty three later in life, and hadn't been there in years, you know. And she goes back there when they start to repopulate it after right. rebuilding it from the so, raids. So and they both they both point, grow crops. They both grow the same crops. It's just 
That's an interconnected vault experiment. So, but also the overseer has their own, you see agenda or whatever. So whatever was going on with the overseers, it, it, I don't think it ever really explained it. I guess. Yeah, I think so, we gotta so, get, get back to that one. So I'm thinking that I mean, again, I haven't played the game. I've only watched one episode, but this seems a mm. lot like Westworld. You have the cowboys, you have the showguns, you have the right, and you have the Anthony Hopkins person who's yeah. over everything, right? <laughs> so, yeah. I've never watched Shogun. <laughs> no, 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 not Shogun. Shogun. Shogun's, Westworld. Fire. Shogun's fire. What? Shogun's fire. Shogun's fire. Oh, no, no, right. Westworld. Yeah. I've never watched Westworld. Yeah, there's different areas in West, different themes to this this artificial world that you can go participate in if you have the money. It's it's a dude. It's so season so one of Westworld is what, one of the, is probably the best single season television show mm. that exists. That sounds like Fallout. What Fallout seventy six is because Fallout yeah. seventy six is like six major factions around the world that you all go and they're all their own. Like it's all its own environment, themes, different people you interact with. That's what Fallout 76 is. This was more like Fallout 4, which is just kind of open world, like looking for your dad. Not Fallout 76, Fallout New Vegas, man. I just keep getting to those. Yeah, up. I do see the comparison, though, like, you know, the mix of uh, Western and kind of like modern aesthetic. Or in this case, like over there at Amazon, I, I imagine there's like a warehouse that does nothing but make like 1950s style props all day yeah. long between yeah. like fallout silo and hello oh <laughs> yeah whoever's yeah. on their props team is is hands it out that. i'll tell you right now uh when i when this show opened up it, it just made me want for silo so bad like i can't wait for season two of that i that still was, have no idea is, what it is in a, it's on apple tv it's oh, uh one of the that's... it's easily one of the best it's in the it's the best TV show I've seen all year long, easily. I'm pretty easily. sure the writer of Silo acknowledges, you know, there's a, a big inspiration is uh, Fallout 4. Has to be. Has to because, be. Yeah, when you watch it, you're like, what's the plot of that show? The plot of that show is I also... I'm about to it. mute my mic and, and watch a one minute and 53. Yeah, I muted it for you. Go for it. What is it, Ag? Oh, just the idea that, you know... When you watch Silo, it's like, yeah, I also played Fallout. This is, yeah. I was, <laughs> that's a big, obvious influence to that show, which I ruined for myself and I read all the books. The story is great. I'm looking forward to the rest of Silo. Oh. Season, season one uh, played pretty close to the book. Yeah, yeah, very close, extremely close. I want to go outside. <gasps> Dude, God, that season was so phenomenal. Yeah, it really was. Oh, the, their ability the to thing. make mundane things seem fantastical, mystical, like just a Pez dispenser. It's like, what did it get there? Yeah, the, the dark magic that is a pulley. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but, dude, I, but yeah, it's so good. It's on Apple TV uh, ever since I, I, have, you know, I have one question. Do they leave the silo? Not answering that. Not answering any questions. Bro, so, watch, the, hang watch, on, the opening, hang on. watch the opening of the season. That's all hang you got to do. So, so the only reason – so if, if Fallout was they only stayed in the vault and I knew nothing, like there was no creatures, no civilizations, no nothing on the outside, I wouldn't care or ever play it or watch it. The only reason I would care to watch Silo is if there's – what it's basically just a copycat of what Fallout the game is. It seems like. Sorry. Yeah. It, they, no. It definitely. I, I, I kind of. I kind of hate it. I. I, I someone who loves Fallout. I've ever seen it. I think Same. you'll enjoy As, Silo. It's a very. Some is somebody who loves Fallout. Hold on, Hold on, Hold on, uh, I'm just telling you. It, it's like. Um, it, it, you're you're totally right. It does. It takes like what you would imagine vault politics are like and just kind of lives in that world and it's you know it's very fun it's a it's, ma it's a massive mystery and like uh what i was while you were watching that what i was saying is what's so what's so unique about that silo show and not comparing it to fallout two separate things but they both have like there's plenty of movies that both take place on a space station you know there's plenty of movies that both take place in in a silo obviously but what's but fallout unique is about one What's you, what's unique about this one is uh 
is its ability to draw you in in a way that makes everything that's so mundane and little seem so massive and and mystical almost. And the the mystery that's going on, there's like multiple mysteries happening. The the plot that's running that's running the season is a murder, and everything, every single room, every hallway, every door, every everything, it, you just have to know something about, and it will not tell you. And you just have to know, and it just drives you to watch every second of that show, trying not to blink. It's not it Fallout. Sounds- it's not trying to be Fallout. Clearly, like Ag said, the person who wrote this has played Fallout. Like, there's, there's no it question. It sounds like it's, it's game. It sounds like what Game of Thrones was in the first beginning seasons. Like, there's, there's the, there's the chance of them going to the top side and you seeing what's up there. Just like how in Game of Thrones was, hey, there's dragons coming. That were you're eventually going to see these dragons. Just keep watching. That's what I get from Silo. Because if if they so never what, go to the top side well, no, and I cool. watch three right. seasons, so I I'm gonna free, I would freak out. <laughs> I don't I don't <laughs> want to tell you anything about this. Any any words at all about this show? You're right. You're right. Because okay. I don't want you. you and I and, no, and I'm fair with so that. So you can like you, the questions that you have right now will be answered in the opening of episode one. You'll get like the direction, and you'll you'll be like, okay, I got you. So like some of the questions you're asking are meant to be asked. In the show, if you can, you can literally watch the opening. Like, you know, like the opening of Fallout was mm-hmm. the whole scene with like at the birthday party with the bombs falling. Right. Watch that for Silo and just see what you think. Like, if you're curious to know more, kind of thing. You know what I mean? I so because I would have to re-subscribe to it. I just need a simple oh, yes or no. Yeah, I'm I need not a simple. No, I if this would decide it, I just need I'm a one answer. yes or no. Is there anything up top? Yes or no. That's what I'm I need not, to know. I'm not. I mean, shit. Earth still exists. Yeah, no, like I need, I need, I need, I need creatures. I need civilizations. I need what Fallout is on the top. And no, why, if you, if you want Fallout, watch Fallout. This isn't Fallout. You're you're well, no, like, I, you too. No, but that but, uh, but my whole that you're feeling that my question whole, just, that you were asking. Mm-hmm. Imagine all you know a culture that that's what you know. They have that always, and that's what the show's about. Right, and hundred percent, I understand. But as a as a fan, I want to. I want. I need to see it. Let him him finish. Sorry, I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, Was it Doctor Spaceman? What's that actor's name? The comedian who was a Cyclops in Fallout. Just kind of his outlook on the world of like, yeah, we're you know going to send you out, and you will be killed immediately because it's terrifying out there. (laughs) <laughs> and that's the culture that you see in Silo. And uh, the, it's reaffirmed by using, like, throwing people out, you know, as, uh, you know, you can't survive the, out there. The but carnal, the question does the camera cut thing. away when they go out? Yes or no? The, well, dude, two of the questions. The more carnal, the, I'm sorry. I, but, dude, the, you know, time is the most valuable resource to me. That's why I, I want to watch it, but I need to know you, these things. Somebody you just say that, just, but you're sitting there. there. Hanging out with me for an hour. So how valuable because, is that be? because that's how important Fallout is to pe- me. Yes. Fallout is a generational show, and I think it is one of the best shows. I'm, I'm not Fallout. answering that. Mark is I'm, being I'm all saying, the worst parts of a friend right now. I'm, talk, hey, I no, I'm gonna put this on blast right now. Breaking Bad was my number one show of all time. Fallout just shattered that for me. Fallout is now the bar for TV shows for me. Hundred percent, and, the, and well, that's the truth. If you had to, without thinking it through very much, what would you put as your top TV show? And not like, not like whole show, but maybe just a season, even like what's something that's all the I way don't think up. That's fair. Time? It's got to be a whole show. You can't no, be just doing, one season. One no, that's season. not. That's I don't think that's fair. <laughs> all right, well, I muted Durs because it's definitely fair. Um, <laughs> one season uh, is Dragon Ball Z Super then. Uh, see, for me right now, like if I had to go something uh, that, that was recent, I would have to say uh, Picard season three to me was the perfect Star Trek series. Season two sucked, I thought, for the most part. But season three to me was perfect, um, which it just blows me away that they're not going with Star Trek legacy after this because they had all the momentum in the world and they've lost it. 
but I would say but Picard season three. To me, I think I've said this before on this on this show. To me, I think the most creative show right now, and again, it's another Star Trek show, but the most creative show right now is Star Trek Strange New Worlds. They have done everything from a musical to crossing over with a cartoon, you know, to doing all these different things. Star Trek Strange New Worlds is the most creative show that I can watch right now on television. We had another Trekkie here with us. Ag's here. Ag, where, what's some of the top shows top shows for you, whether it be an entire season or a single season or entire series? I know you're a big Star Trek person. Do they do they surpass other shows that are not Trekkie shows? I always joke, you know, the worst Trek is better than the best everything else. <laughs> but, like, the current series of Discovery that's airing right now is incredible. Mm -hmm. um the very first episode i was just loving the idea is that there uh is an avalanche is about to crush all these people and it's this wonderful visual of just parking the ship mm -hmm. in the way and kind of like taking it taking the hit and stopping the avalanche in the very first episode and living up to like what they've been doing with discovery for the five seasons this is the last season and we're seeing a lot of things getting wrapped up but it's picking up with lore that started in uh, TNG. Like Absolutely, there's a famous yeah. episode that shows that all the species in the galaxy come essentially from one species. And that's why, like, you know, most of the people in Star Wars look like, oh, a human with something on their forehead. <laughs> but, <Right>. like, <laughs> it's across the board you see that. So it's because we all share... Uh, this progenitor species, mm -hmm. and uh, we're trying to exploring that. And Discovery is set the furthest in the Star Trek universe we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Furthest um, forward or back? Furthest forward. forward. Yeah. So this is, you know, another mm -hmm. couple hundred years, uh, you know, past where Picard has died. Picard Which is died funny because it actually because Discovery actually started further back. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> started in. Uh, yeah, it started before TOS, the original right. series. Is this the Pike series? No, that's Strange New Worlds. Okay. Pike spun out of this, though. He right. was the captain of Discovery for the second season. Right. That's when we first uh, brought uh, Pike into it. Well, the wonderful new Pike. And the big question is, will we see time get changed? Because Pike ends up famously as the guy in a chair where one beat means yes and two beats right, mean exactly. no. With half a burnt started. face and everything. Oh, that's terrible. But to answer you know, Z-Man's question, sorry, I, I, I'm about to have to bounce, but I do I just want to answer E Man's question. Uh if Fallout season two sucks, Breaking Bad takes the throw. I go by <laughs> full full shows. I, I think if if you have if you have a five season show and two of your seasons sucks, but three of your seasons are amazing, you're not one of the best shows. I'm 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 sorry. So that's just not how I look at things. Well, Same I, thing think, with I think skull that with Westworld alone. Season one of Westworld is better than any season or the totality of Breaking Bad, hands down. It's not even not even the same ballpark. Like yeah, that's how much better the, Westworld. What about how many seasons? Is. How many what seasons are there? No, I'm I'm just saying that alone. Like if you take Westworld season one, whether you choose to watch it or think not, it doesn't. I matter. don't think that's fair to a show though. Well, see, dude, uh, there's what there's three seasons, and they got the fourth yeah, season three. coming. So oh, I think I think you have you have to they, look they at announced that, that they're gonna they announced that they're gonna finish the story. Yeah, they've done Cody aware. Rhodes. Nice. They're nice. gonna Cody Rhodes that shit. <laughs> I'll admit sure. season two yeah. would kind of fell off and was and it's like ah oh, we got some actors you like doing stuff you, you watch it yeah, but that's I how season, season two kind of felt. I like season two because it actually like pulled the veil back. So season one was the 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 twist and yeah. they don't they they leave you with it like here's the twist your mind's blown bye bye and you have to just like sit there with a blown mind and it felt um, felt magical and then season two they come and like everyone shows up to investigate the circumstances and you right. kind of pulls the, the veil back and then you know like season three is when we flip the entire script and we we come to actually see what the I world is guys Right. Our Jersey boy. I love you guys. I love you guys. Yeah, I watch, watch, at the end of the day, uh watch watch Fallout. And while you're there, watch uh, season two of Invincible. Do yourself a favor. Yeah, I, I fell off Invincible. I gotta check that out sooner or later. Right. 
I do hope John is more into it with a movie rather than a whole season. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Uh, I think that would work too. But yeah, I think I man, I can't think of a single season of television that I would hold in higher regard than Westworld season one, from the performances to the story to the dual narrative thing to the twist. I mean, Jeffrey Wright's multiple, Bernard, multiple twists, multiple twists. It just doesn't stop. Right. Ed Harris right. was insane in it. Jeffrey Wright's Bernard Anthony, Sir Anthony Hopkins, like. Yep. Dude, it's it's insanity how well done that was. Mm-hmm. And one of those things like where you just you have to watch because you like not only is it the plot itself driving everything, but you just want to know answers so bad. Mm-hmm. Silo did that for me. Silo gave me that feeling where I just I have to know more. I'm curious about every single paper clip in this show. It's the same thing lost originally. Captain yes. Brown. Yeah, lost as a as a totality, even with the ending for some people in the writer's strike. I absolutely love lost. What why did that statue have four toes, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's just What's like, in the vault? It's my own personal hang up. But yeah, poor, the uh poor John Locke, that uh that defeat he felt and some of that stuff, man. Like watching his faith get crushed time and time again. Well yeah, yeah, a couple of good days though. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> sure did. Speaking of JJ, yeah, he and Star Trek, that was one of the things announced at um, yep. CinemaCon was yep. we're getting a Star Trek set the earliest we've ever seen. So it will be set in the Kelvin universe, uh, which is the JJ Abrams, J.J. but that Abrams. doesn't matter because the, you know, the split in time didn't happen until... Until uh, Nero cool dies. Until Nero blew up the Kelvin, right? Okay. So how does that happen? So how does that happen? How does it? It gets to just be a origin story for the Federation or Starfleet. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what they're planning on doing. Um, and then there's the other thing too about yeah. For those who don't know, me and Paul are mourning. Uh, we <laughs> we've lost Lower Decks. Yeah. Star Trek Lower Decks, which is the comedy cartoon version of Star Trek. It's amazing. And also Star Trek Discovery are being canceled at season five. And a lot of people are pointing towards um, the thing you kind of see in TV, which is a show gets more expensive to produce, bringing actors back, uh, bringing lots of people back. They all ask for more money if we're going to keep making this series. And it gets more and more expensive to produce. And that's why often you'll see spinoffs where it will be, you know, no longer Star Trek Lower Decks, but Star Trek Lower Decks New Class or you know, something else featuring these characters. Picard is ending with season three with promise of bringing back what Paul was talking about, uh, the Star Trek um, uh, Legacy. Prodigy? Legacy. Legacy. Yeah, Prodigy is the other one. <laughs> right. And to your point, I mean, then Headquake brought it up is um, Discovery is kind of continuing in some ways that it's going to be um, just Starfleet Academy um, because uh, one of the actors from Starfleet Academy is supposed to, you know, she basically is already teaching at the Academy and it's going to be set. We've already been told it's going to be set in the Discovery timeline, uh, t- you know, not the timeline, but also where um, um, in the time frame that Discovery is already set. So. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to use all these same actors, but we right. do not have to pay them. This is a new show. Right. You know, I think um, you saw this. A bunch of people are talking about it. Like Nickelodeon would do this to people all the time where mm-hmm. uh, your your show is no longer called, you know, what it was called. Now it's called that name plus summer vacation. So right. we can pay you guys a whole lot less. Right. So hopefully we'll see that with some of our favorite Trek creators. And we got this new movie coming out and a promise of a Star Trek four, which will bring back Chris Pine and, right. uh, you know, um, I can't believe and, they've sat on that for so long and haven't yeah. done it yet. It blows my mind. Isn't that cast incredible? Yeah. And yes. like it started out where like Siler was the most you know, sought after actor. Right. And now they have the cast is like Carl Urban. When you say uh, Siler, you mean Zachary Quinto? Yeah. Zachary Quinto, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, also on the same day that they announced that the Star Trek Lower Decks was ending with season 5 they also did announce though that they had renewed Strange New Worlds for season 4 
So because it hasn't gotten to its fifth season yet. So yeah. Well, how many, how many active that. star? How many active Star Trek shows did they have running at the same time? Well, they have. Um, Picard, they have Discovery, Star Trek Strange New World. Picard Picard is over. Picard's done. Okay. Uh, they have Strange New Worlds. They have Discovery, which is which we knew was ending. So that one has pretty much ended too. Um, they have uh, the Starfleet Academy. They have Lower Deck Season Five. Um, they have Star Trek Prodigy, which is still running on Nickelodeon. I mean, on sorry, Netflix. Which who knows that could come back for another year if Netflix wants to pay for it. Um, but they have Season Two that's already been made, already been completed. So um, just, just just to get this right, one year ago to the day. There were six Star Trek shows streaming on at least two separate streaming platforms. Academy is not is they haven't even started filming it. It's just okay, it had so been it had five, been greenlit. Five and two. So Star Trek is just doing too much. <laughs> They're doing a lot. Well, yeah, yeah and, you know, they put and, out eight episode series like right. every three months. So wow. it's keeping Paramount knows what's up. <laughs> For like the people who are. That's why they got all of Star Trek back from Netflix a couple of years ago. Uh, because that was, if you go back and look at what Netflix, like, what are people watching? Well, Star Trek in the office. They just leave that on all day long. So, so how, Paramount, does, how does, like, I know, like, I know, for one, aggressive, don't take this the right way, but you're you're happy with anything you get. Paul, you're, you're, you can be a little critical at times, but you, I feel like I'm talking to two biased Trekkies right now. How is like the, uh, you know how like how harsh people are with the MCU these days. You know how much how harsh people are with the current state of Star Wars. Wait, how what's what's the current atmosphere for wait, Star Trek? Re rewind, rewind like thirty minutes, and I told you how awful Star Trek Picard season two was. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what's the, what's the current what's the current atmosphere toward Star Trek? I think, as a whole? I think Star Trek's biggest problem is that they're not bringing in any new fans. They need to bring in new fans and they need to reinvigorate the whole thing by bringing in new fans. You know, they're, they're playing to Star Trek, um, you know, to Star Trek fans who have been fans for years and years and years. Um, they need to use their volume. <laughs> but the, I think to me that, that, and again, that's an outsider looking in and other people may have different opinions, but to me, they're not bringing up enough new fans to keep the, the interest in Star Trek going for for decades, which is what they need to do. Yeah, I haven't I haven't jumped on any of these despite you bringing them up. They sound fun. I, I watch the movies. I, I really love the Kelvin verse stuff. Like I love it a lot. And obviously, like the movies growing up, and I've seen plenty of episodes of the Next Generation as it was on TV with like pops watching it here and there and stuff. But yeah, I haven't jumped. I, I haven't had Paramount all too long, really. You know, I don't think I've had Paramount a uh, solid year yet. But man, I've been. I love it. I've been burning it up. It's well as yeah, someone who's are, actively more and more frustrated with Disney as every day goes <laughs> by. I'm happy to have Paramount and my kids are big Sonic fans now. Well, we can talk a little bit about the other things Paramount's doing. And you are right, I will definitely be biased about Star Trek. And Star Trek fans, it's mm. kind of hard to get them really riled up. We are um kind of by definition sweethearts. Like a lot of us are just like, yeah, I, you know, I didn't like that one movie, but we still all bought it. And Paramount knows that about us, but I'm very, very happy with what Star Trek's putting out, you know, like right now. The promise of giving us Section 31 starting with Show Yo is like, that's so, like, she was so much fun in Discovery as the evil mirror emperor and kind of bringing her back to star in a movie. Uh, I think it's really, really smart. And that's what they seem to be doing now is capping off a lot of their series with like, what did you guys really like from that? Oh, you like that stuff? We'll make a movie then. So that's kind of what we're seeing right now. But the so other two thing, movies are announced? As, to be yeah, called, Section 31 and... Right. Um, Which Section uh, 31 is going straight to Paramount Plus. Okay. And then the new one, which is again, I don't know how they're going to set it in the Kelvin timeline because the Kelvin timeline doesn't exist where they want to in the time frame where they're going to set it. But well, to be fair, um, like, like, so how did James T. Kirk's father die in not the Kelvin timeline? I don't believe they ever really showed that, did they? So they're two separate timelines, period. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, and even in the Kelvin one, it, it time travel stuff is fun, it diverts yeah. when. 
drops the, the the dark matter, but it's still a separate universe before he even did, I think, is what they're saying. Yeah, and that that may be is you know what it's it it even though it technically diverted and you know Chris Pine became the Kelvin timeline and James nice. and William Shatner became the other timeline. Well, at the point that it that it diverts, does it also create everything before it yeah. as well or recreate it's everything before kills. it? I just heard Eric Bana scream, fire everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yeah. I had no idea what I was getting into when Pops took me to see the first Star Trek and the JJ did. Like I, I, knew, I saw the trailer, I was excited for it. I remember the tagline: "This is not your father's Star Trek." I'm like, "Well, okay." And I sit there in the theater to the one of the most epic movie openings ever. Like, like that was just mind bottling the the way that that opened with a uh, with Thor, Chris Hemsworth. And I think I have an answer now to your earlier question: is hmm. like about Star Trek fans, and you know, they don't argue necessarily about. Um, whether it's good or not, they just argue about the science part of it that's in it. Like that can't really happen, you know. I mean, this is why it can't really happen, you know. <laughs> it's like, and they, they oh, exactly they go all Doc Brown on them. So, um, uh, because because to me, and I think I said this before too, is to me, Star Trek is science fiction. Yeah. Star Wars is not science fiction. Science, Star, uh, sci-fi it's like science, things. exactly sci-fi fantasy type thing. Yeah. Because Star Trek takes science and it tries to explain, it takes things and it tries to take science and make it into the future. And this is how this is how your atoms are like de, you know, de, you know, separated and the then sent somewhere and then put them all back together again. This is how that happens. That's science fiction to me. Um, whereas. Um, Star Wars is, is it's a lot about spirituality. It's a lot about fantasy. It's a lot about those type of things. Not a lot of science fiction, to me. You think that's a fair assessment? I think you just have to. Now that you got Paramount, we'll just start watching every single day. Start mm-hmm. with the original series. There you go. We've got about sixty years to catch up on. There you go. We've already got the movies. So all you gotta do is you know. Do all the animated series, TOS, TNG, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, catch up on Discovery, and then Strange New Worlds. Make sure you do the lower decks because now you'll get all the jokes. Right. Don't forget <laughs> Enterprise. We need back here to talk about it. Don't oh, and Enterprise. Enterprise. Yeah, Scott Bakula. I can't forget yeah. Scott Bakula. That's uh, very important. Give him a he movie. really hopes you don't. No. <laughs> that episode of It's Always Sunny when he cameos. Oh my god. What are the rules? Oh man. But um I figured we would have talked about the Transformers one. Speaking mm-hmm. of Chris Hemsworth, uh the new Spock animated Spock. show coming where uh we have a new Optimus voice for the first time in a long time. Oh yeah, what do you think about that? I'm for it. Peter Cole can only do so much for so long, and this is going back to Optimus before he was a prime, so that you have a little bit of that explains that in there. And, you know, after watching Chris Pratt knock Mario out of the park, I'm more open to the idea of seeing what people can do. You can honor the role. And, uh, yeah, I like Chris Hemsworth. I just hate Disney's take on Thor. (laughs) I think Tyler Rake is one of the coolest modern action stars I've seen. I love the extraction yeah. movies. I love the extraction movies. And then uh, they they are officially doing GI Joe and Transformers mm-hmm. together. Holy shit! It's a cold day in hell, Paul. Look at this. Did I just get a compliment from Scott? No, I'm, I don't know if you oh. did or not. But <laughs> okay. the fact that Scott finally found something he likes less than the Batman. Wow! Wow! That's excessively awesome. Yeah, Hoarder's Hide knows what's up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's all over it. Yeah, that's yeah a, so what, what's that's your thoughts on it? What's it called? Transformers uh, 1 Prime? What's it called? Yeah, I love the idea that they're leaning into this uh, uh, G.I. Joe Transformers multiverse. I've really enjoyed the comics. I'm glad to see that that was... Uh, confirmed because I think you know, we've heard hints about it now for a little while. No, we didn't hear hints about it. If you watch this show regularly back on, and I'm going to give you the damn date because it's easy to remember because <laughs> it was the Sunday after Valentine's Day because Madam Web came out the week of Valentine's Day. So February 18th, right here around this same time, I told everybody that Transformers G.I. Joe crossover was confirmed and it was scheduled for summer 2025. 
And that's because, unlike all you fake Marvel fans out there, I watched Madam Web. Not only did I watch Madam Web, <laughs> I was curious, how, how did this exist? So one thing I've always loved about movies are special features, which nowadays you can like see those interviews and stuff like that on on YouTube or on like articles will have interviews included. The producer for Madam Web is also the producer for a lot of successful movies that we like, including Transformers movies. And he is the producer of the G.I.J. Transformer crossover. And in the Madam Web interview, they knew that there was better things to talk to him about than the movie Madam Web. So they immediately started talking Rise of the Beasts and uh, the crossover. And he confirmed then in that interview that it is green lighted. It's rocking and rolling. They're hoping to have it out summer 2025. <laughs> yeah. yeah, another really true cool. Marvel fan, right there. He'll take he'll take the bullets too, <laughs> the good end. <and> the bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. I'm really really excited for it. Especially, I think the timing is right. Like Transformers hype has never been higher. Kind of like Godzilla. Like Godzilla's the hype for Godzilla has never been higher. Just all the right pieces are in all the right places at all the right time. To get another one out there, I think enough people enjoyed Rise of the Beast. I think people are starting to understand we're in a different era. It's not the Bayverse stuff. It's its own stuff. And, you know, the introduction of the G.I. Joes, we, we've done it twice now. You know, uh, the first two movies, the first movie that had Channing Tate Yum in it, that was a writer strike victim movie. And then the second movie I thought was fantastic. Uh, I don't, you know, there's not much you can do with that. You have a bunch of military dudes with cool skills and fun names driving. That was the one with The Rock, right? Yeah, and Bruce Willis. Yeah, and Janet Tatum, but just for a little while, right? Janet Tate Yum. Tate Yum. Was that yeah. the same one that had the exact same opening to Team America World Police? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> just integrating Paris. <laughs> Probably as a GI Joe fan, I'm waiting for them to push them into the transformers and EU Energon universe. Yeah. The Energon universe is another thing. That's that's what I'm saying. The timing is perfect. So many people are riding high on the transformer stuff. Like the dude, this stuff is just fantastic. And yeah, then, yeah. uh, oh, you're like you're talking about, about. <laughs> um, uh, the cinema con things. And you were saying yeah. that your kids are loving, uh, Sonic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big so, they're big fans of Sonic. As am I. Like that, like I I played it, I have it on my Sega Game Gear. Like and uh but beyond that, like it's just like uh the movie. The movie doesn't the great. doesn't the Knuckle series come out pretty soon? Yeah, with yeah, Idris Elba. That's a wonderful role for him. <laughs> <laughs> that's the big question is what famous person are we going to eventually see as Shadow the Hedgehog? That's the casting news. I know we're all patiently waiting for. Yeah, we've, Who, they've introduced, Shadow. they introduced Shadow. They teased Shadow at the end of Sonic. It's just called Sonic 2, right? No tagline? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I said that that was, really I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with it. Dude, Paramount's got, they, they have a lot of good stuff coming up. Mission Impossible Part 8. Uh, we don't have the name yet. You know, they, they part seven, they call it dead reckoning part one until they put which, it on Paramount plus. Yeah. Which I honestly think that they uh, were trying to just be smart marketing, to be honest with you, because we've had separate names for each of these movies for the entire franchise all the way. Well, it started with number four, really. But even though it was a continuous story, like how this is dead reckoning part one, like uh, what was it? Rogue nation and fallout is one movie. That's literally one movie. The, with the uh, Zolomon storyline. And uh, so that's what they're doing with Dead Reckoning. But I, don't, I think they just didn't want people to go into it not knowing. You know what I mean? Like with the Spider-Verse stuff, how many people came out going, it was just a part one, like, yo, like it was it was said. And I know it's not your job to know that, like to go search news articles right. or see what they talk about. So I get people coming out frustrated. So I think they were just trying to avoid that. But now that everybody knows it was a part one, I'm excited to see what they're going to name it. You know what I mean? Like I, the names are kind of, it's cool. It's part of yeah. it. Yeah. His fingers crossed. Tom don't, you know, do himself in with this next one. You know, it's the only thing I'm always worried about. When yeah. Coming out like, Oh, our poor Tom careful out there, buddy. Oh, headquake but, with a good dude. That's a good one. The shadow knows they need Alec Baldwin. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no, Tom. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just don't People give him a gun. The Chi movie, the team that was involved with it had lots of talent. I really enjoyed it. And it was I maybe 30 things. minutes too long, like most films, was more Jackie Chan than Bruce Lee. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of long format movies. You'll never hear me complain about it unless they're bad. I thought mm-hmm. Shang-Chi was okay. The martial arts in it was great. That's about it for me. Like there, there's some cool moments in it. The movie just it didn't have the X factor. You know what I mean? I think that was like close to after Endgame, and you're just looking for that X factor. Even the early, the early Marvel movies had that X factor. You know, the, like somehow the Ant Man even had that X factor. I remember sitting in a, a panel that Stan Lee was talking. And Pops was there. Like when, like this back in like 2013. And stands like he he told the crowd that they're making an Ant Man movie and he couldn't believe it. he's like they're actually gonna like how, how, are you, how are you gonna make a movie about Ant Man it's just Ant Man but yet they did it and it had that that little X factor to it. Well, I mean, you put Michael Douglas and Paul Rudd in a movie and it don't make right. money. You're doing something wrong, you know. It's a, yeah. Walton Goggins was in the second one too. Yep. Yeah, I think Edge of Tomorrow is still the name of it. I know like that was like the long title, right? Edge of Tomorrow, Live, Die, Repeat. It's still no, called Edge Repeat. of Tomorrow, though. Yeah, in America, right? Is it called something else somewhere else? I thought it was Live, Die, Repeat. In other places in America, it was that. I think I remember it being reported when it first came out. Yeah, I know that Live, Die, Repeat was like the tagline for the movie. I wonder if it... Uh... But the uh, the Paramount mm. thing, man, I think we, we're, we're burying the headline too. I think the last Ronin, you know, live action. Mm. I think a lot yeah. of people are talking about that. I hear, I hear R- a lot of people not excited. Which an, R-rated, an R-rated The Last Ronin. Yeah, yeah I'm not excited. It's a it's an interesting thing, and i i would I'm interested to see if like they could catch the aesthetic of the original 1990s one, and you know put a guy in a turtle suit and have Mikey being all sad. I mean, I'm down for that. I I don't because like yeah, the R rate is leaning on gore. I think it was Remy who exclaimed like turtle love. <laughs> it's like well, I don't know if we need that. See, I don't know why you would make it R-rated. That you know, I don't get that. But I am yeah, excited. We were talking about that on in the mix. The comic is not R-rated, so why should the movie yeah. be? If they wanted to mirror the comic, they should like announce it to come out on like October 10th and not have it come out for like five months later. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys read the new turtle comics though with the with the new four turtles? Uh, no, I, I last Ronin Volume Two. I, I skipped out on. I have I have issue one. It's it's not opened. But I have it. I ordered the John Jang variant for it, of course. It's up here in a pile of mail. Mm. Sorry, Paul. I love these turtles. <laughs> you know, I was not excited going into it. Oh, so soon. <laughs> but I'm, I'm buying all the everything they put out with these new turtles. I'm I'm all in. So yeah, I've I've read I picked up and read the last run in volume one, and then uh the lost days. I picked up and read probably the first five of those before I dropped it. Four, maybe four of them. It wasn't bad. It's just like, uh, I don't know. Dude, there's no reason for the TMT. All right. So that one had, uh, they, they had, they had it originally written and illustrated and they sent out a sampler to comic shops. Right. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, comic shops kicked back and said, oh, I'm not fans of the art. I don't like the art. I don't like the art. And enough of them said it that it gave them cold feet. So they went back and scrapped all the art, hired Ben Bishop to come in and redraw it all. And they claimed that's what caused it to delay as much as it did because they started putting it out before Ben was, I guess they were putting it out as quick as he could draw it, maybe. Or they were trying to milk the hell out of it. I got to get my hands on the original. Ruby G, package came in, bud. Package came in. It's up here. In the pile of mail, my good sir. I actually have it with another package I got from you, I think probably about a year ago now. I'm going to find a way to open them at the same time. Make a theme out of it. And then we get the 
we get more Aang, too. That's the other big announcement. They're giving us more yep. Avatar, except adult. Whoa, 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 whoa. Giving Aang. us more what? Avatar The Last Airbender. Last Airbender. There we go. Call, I'm going to call there. it Avatar. There, no, 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 not on this channel. It's not the Papyrus <laughs> Avatar. It's the other one. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> the, pa- the bold Papyrus. Exactly. It's not blue. <laughs> yeah, on, on this channel, Avatar means something different. <laughs> I'm excited to see Aang's story. That's a big deal. When you're oh, this is going to be old man Aang, right? Like, not, I don't say old man, but like not a kid. He's going to be an adult, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Something Did I you watch all of season it. one of The Last Airbender on Netflix? I've seen all of this stuff. So I watched the uh, first episode. I'm like, yo, that was an awesome remake of the M. Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you. I'm another one of the people who is out here who's been happy to be like, I liked it, and just see what happens to the room. <laughs> <laughs> so, whoa, well, wait, were you a fan of the M Night movie? Because I don't say that jokingly. I legit like it. Yo, Ruby G. No, like I. This, I so this like... is a card. So, real quick, White Tiger, cool, calm, and collected. You can follow him on Instagram by that same name. He's a fantastic artist and does art cards, mm-hmm. and uh, you can. You can let me get this where it focuses. You can QR code scan that. You can, uh, uh, what's it called? Screen grab. Yeah. Screen grab that on the, uh, and get right to him. But, uh, he does, he does these. He does all kinds, like you can purchase them, you can commission them, you can, uh, also win them in little things that he does. Fantastic artist. And he just did like an Iron Man XO themed, uh, thing on his IG page where I got a second one in. Which is cool because I will now be pairing it with that one. But be sure to give him a follow and check him out. Not that avatar. I'm sorry, but yeah, the uh, M Night Shyamalan last Airbender movie. I loved it. I loved it. I uh, I don't hate on that or the Dragon Ball as much as other people do. I've always been a big you know pusher of the idea of like that didn't take away the original. Someone did something. You know, I don't get mad when. You know, they put Spider-Man on Broadway, so I can't get mad at this, you know. <laughs> well, I can I I honestly I get people's distaste for it, but for me, I was able to enjoy it. I don't sit there and promote it, I don't recommend it to people, but for me, I didn't watch any of the cartoon. So when I, I was a store manager of Movie Stop when it came out, and in my mind, M. Night Shyamalan is a well known director. Y'all just gave him a huge budget to make a live action Nickelodeon cartoon. So I I I took it home one day because like uh, at movie stop you can like take movies home, watch them because they encourage you to do it, sign them out, bring them back, and uh, so you can try to talk with customers about them. Like if if a customer came in and had a question, they wanted you to know what movie they were talking about, and I and I was very good at that. So when I watch this movie, I'm like. Okay, so it's kid actors. It, it, it's, it feels like kid actors, and the special effects were great. The story was heartfelt, and like I don't know, I've watched enough stuff that it's easy to like be immersive with some stuff, you know, like that. Like I'm a Power Rangers fan. It's easy to see past the camp to the story for kid stuff. So when I watch this, I'm like, yo, this has got to be the the biggest budget kid movie I've ever seen in my life. They went all in for this for these eight year olds, and at the end of it, when Ang is on the wall. And he just fires up on all cylinders and the whole wall of water comes up and he front kicks it and he just has his arms out. Like I'm tearing up. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. And then then I go back to work. I'm like, yo, y'all seen that last airbender? And they want to crucify me. I'm like, what is going on? And <laughs> well, I, had, I had no clue it was hated. If you've never seen the show again, Ever. you know, after you finish all of Star Trek, immediately <laughs> what you need to do, of course, is watch all of that, then all of Korra. And get caught up because it really is wonderful. Those those shows are just wonderful. What was the second series they did? Uh, was it a sequel with a female lead for Avatar? Yeah, yeah, Korra. That's the that's the blue girl, the water girl, right? Exactly. Yeah. See, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, you're a fan, dude. I, I I haven't seen that. To be honest with you, Jeff, I'm very familiar yeah. with it, but uh, haven't haven't watched that one. But yeah, there's just so much to talk to. Like when you you, you messaged me earlier talking about uh, we're going to talk about Cinecon and they've released too much stuff. You know, like I think we've only talked about Paramount. 
Yeah, I think uh, what is another big thing? Wicked was uh, they they showed a trailer for Wicked. Deadpool three had a spot where Thor was featured in the trailer. Mm -hmm. Alien Romulus had a, a couple little scene features that were described as brutal and shocking. There was a there's a lot of stuff that came out of Cinecon, despite it being what the th what theaters theaters reviewed it as saying y'all aren't giving us enough stuff this year because like the strike is you know what I mean like. For us as consumers, like your mileage will vary based on your taste, but from a business perspective, they're feeling the strangle on the numbers because of the strike. Yeah, that was the thing that I, I mean, in the articles that I read about Cinecon was one thing that was painfully obvious was that they focused a lot on after this year because there's not really a lot that's going to come out for the rest of this year because of the strike and everything else. So, um, uh, but one thing that they, they did also read too was you do talked about Deadpool uh, versus Wolverine is uh, they're supposedly supposed to do a a a, a rather obscene uh, popcorn bucket for that. The Deadpool yeah, and Wolverine, right? right? Their mouths open on the side. Uh, they, there have been some people that have done some mock-ups of things, which has been pretty funny. Yeah, Obviously, they're not those aren't going to be there, but they're not topping the bucket. Dune bucket. You can't top the Dune bucket. <laughs> exactly. There ain't no topping the Dune bucket. <laughs> I mean, you could top it off, but there ain't no beating it. it. I'm happy. I'm looking forward to all these buckets. I hope there's a bucket for every single one of these movies from now mm -hmm. on. I love this stuff. I got a good yep. top one. I get, I get the tins like at the Regal and stuff. I've got like the Godzilla Kong tin is probably the nicest one I've seen in a while. Man, I'm a sucker for a good bucket. The yeah. last two Alien movies, Prometheus and Alien Covenant. We're letdowns. Romulus looks like it's going back to horror origins. I was a huge fan of Prometheus, and I'm a huge fan of Alien Covenant as well. I like uh, those a lot, but I can see where, uh, you know, I think it was shifting back in the right direction. It felt like if you go from Alien to Resurrection, I feel like we we're going back in the right direction from there. Prometheus, I think, was just. Uh, too ambitious for some people you know like it it's in that world but it's not necessarily an alien movie it's the engineers movie and i i love that about it and something about ridley scott like kind of how james cameron has his own style for science fiction like you can tell just from looking at some of the sets or the vehicles or the spaceships like yeah that's a ridley that's a ridley scott feature like i like that about his stuff as well yeah, yeah there some, you of go. The, some of the other stuff was um uh, apparently there was some film from uh, Captain America Four: Brave New World. Yeah, that, we're finally that, finally that, that actually people seem to enjoy, and it, apparently I guess it explains why our Ross is now Harrison Ford. Um, apparently they have a reason for that. Um, Did they say why? Is it a multiversal I, thing? I, I didn't. I didn't actually read that. Um, Disney did their thing on Moana Two. Um, the Rock was up there dancing. Yeah. You'd, never know, you'd never know that you never know that a month and a half ago he's making Cody Rhodes bleed. Now he's dancing in in Moana too. I, I watched him do a he was he was doing the rock at the wrestling thing, but it was like some little meet and greet. And the parents filming on the phone, he was meeting a little kid. Like he was he was in his heel rock get up and everything, but he was talking to a kid. So he was he was being himself. You know, he's like, "Hey, have you seen Moana?" And he's like, "Yeah." And he's like, "I'm Maui." And he yeah. starts <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah." Yes, <laughs> Moana's like my favorite modern Disney cartoon God. like by far. I love that movie. Watched it a million times. It's yeah, so Moana good. Is great. It is so character. good. Now he's such she a great was, character uh, too. I just got off that Disney cruise, and they had Moana all over that. They were happy to embrace <laughs> that music. That's the, the place to do it too, like out on a cruise. Hell yeah! Mm -hmm. Yeah, Moana was going hard out there. There was, you know. Maui actors and people running around. It was great. Yeah, my theater's in the heart of LA and has 14 screens. And any day of the week, you can rent the screen for a birthday. Yes, yeah, like that here as well. Probably easier to rent them than ever. I remember during the lockdown, you know, movies weren't coming out. So down here, I mean, I say lockdown is very subjective because down here, what I mean by lockdown is here's a list of movies we're allowed to show at any given time. You want to go watch them, give us a hundred bucks and you can bring 20 people in there and watch it. And like all kinds of cool stuff, like uh, classic stuff like Ghostbusters, Superman the movie. Yeah, the this isn't the a ton line, of theaters releasing right now. Yep, the line Joker. 
Captain America 4 I heard was Ross saying he had to shave his mustache to run for president. And that is the line that's supposed to explain <laughs> why it's now just Harrison Ford. Perfect. Perfect. He, it works. She could have done just a Clark Kent thing and just said, I took off my glasses. Yeah, and Andy's president. He is president. So uh, Joker 2 trailer. So uh, this one, like I was already interested. I, I love the first Joker. I, obviously, like, yo, talking about a movie that takes creative differences to a whole new level, that's exactly what Todd Phillips did when he created his Joker movie. But it worked. It worked tremendously well as its own thing. Uh, fantastic film, nominated for numerous Academy Awards. Joaquin Phoenix won for Best Actor of the Year. Uh, of course, you know, it was on an $80 million budget, if I'm not mistaken, for the first movie, and it made over a billion in box office. Of course, they were going to make another one. They would be irresponsible not to. I can't, I don't know the budget for number two is yet. I'd be kind of curious just adding Gaga to the list and seeing some of the set pieces. I believe it's, I'm going to go out on a limb and say 150. Because you know how they are these days with budgets. Joker 2 budget, $200 million, Jesus. $200 million, yep. That, that's reckless. But the trailer dropped for it, and I was excited for it. You know, the, the big thing that everyone's talking about, not that it's being made, not that Gaga's in it, all that's being overshadowed by the talk of it being a musical. That trailer dropped, and I don't give a shit that it's a musical. That looked amazing. It's a jukebox musical, which I think is my criticism. I like I don't it think being it's, a musical. And I don't think it's completely musical. And I think all the musical stuff is happening in his head. I just wish it was all original music, you know, like, I'm the Joker. But, like, <laughs> I don't want original music for this. Yeah, so I have to, you know, my joke about this immediately is like they're gotta do bad romance, right? That's obvious. You would think that would, that would be dope, but it would also be too meta. It would take a you little out too of on it. the nose. It's a musical, 15 classic bits and a few new original songs. Is that confirmed, Jeff? Jeff's got the scoop on a lot of it. It seems stuff. like it's set between the end of the first movie and before he goes on trial, right? I think is if that, that's that's what I took away from the trailer. From the trailer, it seems like he's obviously in Arkham because of the events of the first movie with killing Robert De Niro's character. And if you watch, you know, there's a couple scenes where you see the courthouse, you see one with him in the back of a transport chained up, looking out the window, nodding and smiling at supporters as he goes through a crowd. And then you see him going up the steps of a courthouse in one scene with the big crowd there. You see Harley Quinn walking up in her full get up. And I am convinced that, 100% of this is in his head. Like we might get, we might get like out of the movie, maybe I'd say 10 to 20% that's not delusion. Cause you know, the, with the first movie, the whole relationship with the neighbor, the nervousness of asking her out, taking her out, all that was all in his head. I think we're going to take that to the extreme in this one where he's looking at Harley as a patient that he's having this relationship with. I don't think she's a patient. I think that's his doctor. And I think that's how far the delusion's going. As far as the musical numbers, I think that worked so good because we had those moments in the first one. Like there was numerous scenes with just the uh, the symphony playing and him like contorting and dancing yeah. and this and that. There's a lot of those scenes, and they say in the trailer for the second one, what everybody's not focusing on, what we should be talking about is, I'm not alone anymore. Right. So I think like those moments are still happening, but it's happening with a secondary with him. So it's changing his vibe pretty much. I don't know, like like just how much like psychological stuff is going into the storytelling. Like it just has me so interested. I just can't wait to to watch it and just see what you can and can't figure out along the way. I just can't help but think about all the other DC characters in that universe, you know. The, uh, you know, like Batman is actually like, you know, Clint Eastwood having, you know, uh, becoming like Carrie Kelly's grandpa in a belfry. <laughs> <laughs> the Riddler, you know, is just someone upset at the crossword puzzles in the town. You just keep doing this with everyone. Just give them. It's the same problem I kind of have with Logan, where like when I watch pretentious comic book movies, I just can't stop laughing. I just keep, you know, like I keep imagining Hank 
where it stars like the guy from Frasier. We're just gonna do that next. Uh, you know, just a very serious take and look at these characters. But, yeah, the last Joker I didn't really like, but I I love what they're doing with this one. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, out of a uh, out of the Wolverine films, there's a Wolverine trilogy with Origin, the Wolverine, and Logan. How do you stack those up? If you you're you're obviously not a fan when they take these things too seriously. Where where do you fall in line with those? Wolverine's my favorite, right? There's yes, a, right. That's the best one. <laughs> yes, by far. I love Logan, but the Wolverine is amazing. There is a scene where he's being attacked by it's got to be a hundred ninjas. Yeah, when he's trying to get Enrico. <laughs> he's standing on like a tractor, and uh. He waits till all the ninjas like get around him. He puts an unlit cigar in his mouth. He then blows up the tractor he's standing on, and when the flames go away, the cigar is now lit. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It deserved, you know, awards, and it was snubbed, obviously, that year. Well, not just that, but like the the high speed train scene. Yeah, where he keeps letting go. Insane. Yeah, the the fact that his healing factor is a little messed up. The the whole opening scene in World War in uh, Japan when the bombs are falling, wow! And then the extended cut that you can get with that that whole rampage through the city when all the ninja are coming out to stop him, like it, it's massively extended. And I think it's only the extended cut where you see him blow up the tractor, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that is yeah. only the extended cut where he lights a cigar and that was edited out of the theatrical cut. But yeah, I, I love that. The silver samurai was awesome. Viper was cool. Like yeah. I, I have really no problems cool. with that movie. I thought the Wolverine was amazing. I can watch it right now. It was great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Logan, you know, I just love the, uh, professor X in that. I always keep picturing him in my head, like yelling about like, I used to have a cool wheelchair. Logan, <laughs> <laughs> That X wheels. You suck. <laughs> yeah. Now, you confirmed for November release. If I'm right on that date, yeah, that's the one with Willem Dafoe. Willem, I think that's an Edgar Wright flick as well. That's going to be insane. Willem Dafoe is playing Van Helsing. Uh, Y'all saw the Christian Bale stuff, right? For uh, Frankenstein, he's going to be Frankenstein's monster coming up. All of this stuff with all that is just kind of making me bummed out about the Dark Universe not taking yeah. off. I really wish that stuff would have taken off. I, I really enjoyed that last mommy movie with uh tom cruise and you had russell crowe playing dr jekyll like there was that had so much promise to it yeah they they're definitely not going to continue with that they're not yeah. going to eventually backdoor that because i think people are starting to appreciate uh calling back to things from years ago you can well they were they were slated for javier bardem to be frankenstein they were slated for johnny depp to be the invisible man where they're supposed to be the next two and uh, they they made that title card too soon. They retconned yeah, like Dracula a, Untold into it, where uh, Luke Evans was your Dracula and Dracula Untold. But the way that movie ended ended in modern time, like your your final scene of the movie was was him in modern time, like Paris or something like that, or London. But uh, you had you had Dracula Untold retconned into it already. Huh? Yeah, I would love a, a league. A league sequel as well. Yeah, you also got the George Reeves Superman thing coming out, and um, here in Atlanta, they're building Christopher Reeves Superman. Christopher thing, Reeves right? Superman. It's super Slash Man. Man, which supposedly they man. showed they showed some from clips from it, and apparently there was not a dry eye in the house. Are they not doing both? I thought they were doing a George thing as well. Christopher Reeve story. Yeah. Oh, okay. That Warner Brothers has bought and is going to be releasing. Mm -hmm. Super Slash yeah. Man. Mm -hmm. I can't wait I'm to see to it. I'm looking forward to crying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm not even lying. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, there are countless things. What else was announced? I don't know. We've been rolling for almost two hours, though, and... Uh, if I'm being completely honest with you guys, I've worked 122 hours in the last uh, 15 days. That's a big week for you. So I would like to go to bed. Well, it was nice chat with you guys about nerd stuff. Yeah, yeah. Hollywood Land, Anytime. fantastic movie. Yep. Yeah, Lenore killed him.
Yeah, there's still so many things we didn't even touch on, though. They, uh, what is it called? Uh, Mickey 17, that Robert Pattis movie where he keeps getting cloned. Yeah. And like so many Warner Brothers things. It's great. So, yeah, yeah, we'll just have to talk about it next week. Yeah, I didn't, didn't uh, I don't think I saw any of the Warner Brothers news yet. Oh, Peacemaker season two started filming. Not filming, yeah, but that. James Gunn was on the set. He shared a photo and he said, first day of Peacemaker season two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the reflection of Peacemaker's helmet. I saw that. That was great. Yeah. Yeah, out here in Atlanta, they have uh, LexCorp and the Fortress of Solitude being built. Can you get pictures of it? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, I saw Maybe where you said the thing start. where they were casting for extras in the movie called Gemini, which is actually when they call yeah, Gemini. Keep an eye on that. You might. Yeah, yeah, out here in Atlanta, there's a good chance you can be in the Superman movie right now. That's yeah, the casting company. Have good stuff. Well, I appreciate you guys hopping on. Hope everyone has a fantastic night. We'll talk some comics next week. There's just, um, yeah, we just rambled for too long. A lot of good stuff came out. Transformers. <laughs> that comes out soon. Suicide Squad. Power I don't know what. I don't know what's what week anymore. Oh, this. Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. Central 2815. DC Comics Deep Dive. House of Brainiac Part 1. Yeah, it's all kicking off. So you can follow the House of Brainiac stuff that's going on in DC over on Sector 2815's YouTube channel. Every Monday, 10 a.m., post a video. I mean, you can watch it anytime you want, but that's the earliest you can. Uh, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, this will get. This is good. Just needs better art. Uh, I love everything about that. Wow, Rob V's crushing it on Detective. Uh, every time I say I'm going to drop this, I'm like, I'll get the next issue. I read this one. I'm going to drop this. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get the next issue. Uh, this, this is fun. Like I'm not going to lie, this is fun. I picked up some more Miller World stuff. Got Starlight finally. Paul at ABX ordered a bunch of Miller World stuff. So I'm excited to dive into those. And speaking of Miller World, streaming now on Apple TV, Argyle is available to watch at home. I'm not sure. I think the physical media comes out June, June, maybe May, maybe May. I don't know. But uh, I think you can purchase it digitally now or you can just watch it with an Apple Plus subscription. But I think I'm about to go turn I, it. It started streaming Friday or something this past week, and I still haven't watched it again. I've watched it, seen it twice, but I haven't seen it since it went digi uh, 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 digital. Mark, get some rest. See you Tuesday at the store. I hope, man. I hope. I did pre-order the Jang Transformers EU covers. Yeah, he's done two so far. As a matter of fact, in a package right here that's unopened, the Optimus Prime covers. I'll open that one day as well. Now that I think about it, I need to write all that so I don't forget what's in it. Aggressive, what do you got going on? What kind of cool phone calls are you uploading soon? I feel like you make a lot of them, but don't right. upload them. I, I was waiting for you to start talking about Roadhouse. <laughs> yeah, I do. I have a review for Roadhouse out right now where I just talk to a guy who wants to get off the phone with me as I keep going on about Roadhouse. I do. I have a lot of things that I'm about to come out with. I do have a bunch of phone calls I've been making lately where I don't call other people. It's just if you happen to call me, then, you know, I'm allowed to talk about whatever I want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. So for context, spam callers call him and he records them and talks to him as General Thrawn or about stuff and he uploads those conversations and they're amazing thank you they <laughs> I are amazing, amazing. But I, I heard they want the OG kick-ass cast back for another movie uh we act man I'm telling uh I know your work says well uh this was probably two months ago now Paul maybe three when we got mm. when we did the layout of what's happening with the Miller world stuff they're about to re rejuvenating the uh kick ass stuff, but there's a there's a follow up to Argyle coming with Sam Rockwell's character as well as Liam's 
I think it was Liam, no, Chris Hemsworth added to the cast. And then the next kick ass trilogy is already green lit. One of them's already done filming and they're, they're it's different. Like they're doing like uh it's set in olden days, and then the second one will be like the modern day with the introduction of kick ass. It's kind of more in line with what they've kind of made canon in the books now that they brought all of his properties together mm-hmm. with uh, big game. So it looks like they're really airing stuff out. But for those that miss the that's been out long enough now. Argyle is a Miller World movie. Argyle exists inside of a movie universe that you have already seen. And I'll just leave it at that because it's a big twist to it and everything. Go see Argyle. Watch it. It is fun, fun, fun. Right. Watch it through the credits. Yes, (laughs) yes. Most certainly watch after the credits. Uh, Is Master Season over yet? Uh Scotty won. What was his name? Scotty. What? Scotty Scheffler. Scheffler. He won the second green jacket today. He he dominated. It was right. an amazing third round. And uh, so tomorrow, uh, most everyone will go home tomorrow. Optimus on Trans Megatron on EU. I'm confused. Optimus on Transformer Megatron on Energon Universe. What? Yes. That's what I would read the last. What? Megatron on Energon. Are you talking about the free comic book day book? The Energon universe has a free comic book day book coming out that has Megatron on the cover. Ryan Otley is doing the art for the free comic book day book. And if you're reading the Energon stuff, you're going to definitely, definitely want to get that free comic book day book. It ties everything together. But this week's Transformers has got the star screen for the last time. Most one was Real Star Roadhouse. I still haven't watched it. Modern Day Jerky Boys, but they're going back. It's like Kingsman, third movie prequel. Man, the Kingsman that was that was wild. I like that a lot. Yes, we have Augustus back. So many people I know were looking for Jelly Roll the other night because he was in town. I bet he was at Hooters. They're, everyone's either at Hooters or they're at T Bones or they're on the national property at an event. <laughs> I don't think Jim Carrey would do another kick ass. He has a very strong anti violent stance now. He also has a very dead character in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he wasn't uh yeah, he he's talked out about that, like not coming back to do anything like that. Yeah, that's fair enough. Fair enough. Good thing they killed off his character though. Sad that they did. See, they killed the dog. Should have never killed a dog. Yeah, now he plays a character that just stuffs, you know thousands of cute little creatures inside robotic you know outfits and that <laughs> yeah. dr robotnik yeah <laughs> one of video game world's most famous you know lunatics but no okay we, we can pretend for jim carrey so. yeah when uh steak and shake was open bubble was the last person to win when multiple was like going a little streak to bubble watson mm-hmm. oh bubble watson but yeah that's going to do it for tonight. I appreciate everybody coming and hanging out. I'm going to kill this so I don't just ramble until it's the morning time. Thank you all for coming on. And until next time, as always, we are Legion. Is that it? Is that all you got?